all you Golden Globiacs. Welcome back. Biggest month. We've been fucking excited about this for the last three months. We've been preparing for a little over, uh, I think, from the beginning of our podcast. We were like... Beginning of the podcast. Yeah, we we like, knew This it is the reason we created the podcast. This was the, uh, the existential crisis you were having when you had no power. You were trying to search down deep. You were trying to figure it out what it was. It right. was the Rucker month. Right. That's what uh, we've been living for for the last Yeah, people, years. this is it, man. This is amazing. We're going to have five eight weeks of Rucker Hauer with five amazing guests. I don't know. I, can, I didn't think I could top myself with the Death Wish group I got together, but I think I did. It really was like the what's the the Expendables li- grouping, right? And we're doing Expendables too. We have one extra guest. We have one extra movie. Mm-hmm. We have huh. it's going to be ninety four hours of content. <laughs> so prepare right. yourself. Uh, yes. Get your colonoscopy ready. Wait, what's what? Wait, what's the pee bag thing? That's a catheter. Catheter, not no. a colonoscopy. A catheter. No. Colonoscopy is where they probe up your ass. Yes, it is. <laughs> Got it backwards. Or forwards. I don't well, know. Griff, before we get into Rucker Howard, we got to talk about another genius. We were lucky. We were fortunate enough. Luck, excuse me. Luck has nothing to do you're, with you're it. You're right. It was, they actually begged us to do it. Yeah. And we acquiesced because we love this guy. Glenn Danzig. He's got a new movie out. Death Rider and the House of Vampires. And he contacted us. He said, look, you guys were the only guys that got Veronica. You only understood what I was going for. That's it. And I want to give you guys a private screening. Not to mention, uh, he saw our Mermad and Breakdown of Death Rider in the House right. of Vampires. And he actually he... made adjustments to the film because of our breakdown. Because there exactly. were criticisms. We, there we, was. We have to be honest. Yeah. I said, I like your exterior shots. More exterior shots. I zoomed said, out. I said, where's the lingering? I said, I need more <laughs> lingering. And he, he, and lo and behold, he did it. And we're not going to get into the details because if Cleopatra Records has their shit together, which they didn't have for the last movie, they should have this ready for Halloween. And if it is ready for streaming on Halloween, we will watch it again and we will do our Halloween episode on Death Rider as a game. So disappointed because he promised us an original score. He added one song. It was, I liked it. His voice sounded good in it. I liked it too. I wanted more of it. But he didn't give it to us. Well, and then he asked me, like, do you want some juju bone? And I was like, uh, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't think I want it. Oh, but, man. yeah, you're going to get our honest appraisal of that when that movie dropped. We, a lot of things to talk about. We, it was an improvement. was an improvement. Over Veronica. Yep. Acting improved. Yep. Even his girlfriend with the weird face. She picked up a new accent way up, better than me. She went away and got a new accent. Yep. <laughs> and <laughs> it was okay. It was okay. And, and the man himself, Glenn Danzig, he's he's pulling a John D. Hart on this one. Writer, 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 producer, director, actor, soundtrack, editor. All you needed to do was bang a chick with the Death Rider song playing on it to do a full John D. Hart. That's right. right. By a fire, probably. So <sighs> stay tuned for that next month because you know we do. Well, next yeah, I, yeah next month because it's Schlocktober where we uh, do the horror movies. Yeah, we don't know if it's going to be out by then. Yeah, but we're going to be positive about. it. Okay. It won't be, but we're going to be wishful thinking. Yeah. Anyways, we got so much Rucker to talk about, and uh, it just so happens that this movie it involves a monster, and not a kind of kind of monster I can identify or you can identify. But it's okay, Murray. We have somebody out in the field, a certain uh, lycanthropist, and he miners in expert in this field. Yeah, absolute. That's why he only goes by one name. Yes. Lycanthropist Chris is here right. with us to help us understand the inner thinkings of Rucker Hauer and this venom-like monster. Chris, how you doing? Hello, I'm doing all right. Uh, yeah, our uh, I, I have uh, some associates out in London uh, who've been uh, for years trying to track down uh, the the type of monster that uh, that is featured in this particular uh, particular film. Um, and its origins have uh, have been a little murky, uh, but um, supposedly it, uh, it 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 grew from uh, like some diseased rats that uh, that infected like a homeless guy somewhere, and uh, oh. yeah, uh, yeah, a on type a of truck. rat plague. Yeah, and, yeah, and uh, and like- as the as the oh yeah. 
I feel like person. Europe just they're they're just lousy with rat plagues, aren't they? Isn't that their whole history? Is just rat plagues everywhere? Well, the question yeah, is, yeah, Black Death and all that. Yeah, was the homeless guy into heavy metal? Because it's a heavy occultism angle on this monster. That's why I was confused. Is it a demon? Is it a monster? I don't know. That's why I have to go to Chris. Yeah, that's why we're trying to get these facts straight. I mean, have you guys even been able to sort that out, you and your colleagues? Like, is it a demon from hell? Is it out of the Doom movie? Do we need to call in The Rock to help us out? Yeah, it's it, it's been a bit of a mystery that we've been trying to trying to uncover. Um, uh, it, it, it's possible that uh, that it was a a, a satanic hobo. Um, it's possible that uh, it was just um. Just, just somebody who was who was listening to a metal album, playing in uh, playing in reverse when he got bitten and infected. Oh, um, it happens. That happens. Yeah. Yeah. The jury's still out on on how it got started and why it's it, it's taken the interesting turn that it has. Um, but uh, yeah, as uh, as as the uh, the disease uh, swept sweeps through uh, through the hobos, uh, it mutates them and they grow. Uh, they grow Ray Ban sunglasses, uh, become ten feet tall, and grow uh, grow claws, and uh, and prowl about in the in the London underground, um, uh, munching on people in in uh, uh, people's hearts in ritualistic uh, fashions. Yeah, it's really very. Is, is Charles Manson a heart eater? Was he was that... a Scorpio. Apparently, I learned from this movie. Oh wow! Okay, and that is the evilest of all the uh, zodiac signs. Which sign? What, what month is that? Was it? Fuck! I don't know. I I don't know this. I'm not a spiritual person. I'm not spiritual at all. Either. Oh no! But you know, Griff, people have been asking me online, "Why are you doing a Rucker Howard month?" You know what I tell them, Griff? I tell them, "Fuck you." We're going to do whatever fucking thing we want to do. But also, I tell them, watch this movie, Split Second, and you will see a master class. Yeah. And an actor who clearly is doing this movie just for the money, but is doing what a you... lot of strange things I... to, make, to make it interesting for himself. I'm very disappointed in those words you just used there. It's the truth. Because I looked it up, and Rucker said he, was, he read the script and was thrilled. Thrilled. Where did you read? Chris, that? you got some background on uh, on Rucker's enthusiasm for this movie. Uh, truthfully, I haven't actually seen any interviews uh, where he describes Dang. his initial okay. thoughts on it. Um, it's just uh, Riff however, line some again. Of the producers said that uh, it looked like he was kind of phoning in some of it, but at the same time, he's like it's, it's Rucker Howard. What's not to love? Like he he puts his all is, in. But regardless. You, you, first, you rudely interrupted me, Griff. I'm trying to say he's clearly doing it for the money, but he's like, I'm just going to do some weird shit and make this interesting. I'm going to Billy Drago this motherfucker. Yeah. And he excel. Because that is the shit. I, I was like, I was texting Griff. I was, I was watching. Griff was at a, a fucking local mud show wrestling thing. And I was like, things, Rucker, chef kiss, the things Mark Howard's doing. Like, yeah. And you know it's just him throwing. This shit was not in the script. He's just throwing it out there. Yeah, and it's and it's sticking, Griff. It's sticking like so, some candies on the side of a refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, he had a oh he, my. he had apparently a history of just doing weird ad lib things off the cuff to to throw people off or just for the hell of it. Um, uh, well, um, one of the stories that was told on the uh, the director's commentary uh, for this film uh, talked about how he'd heard that on another production. Uh, uh, Rudger and, uh, and another actor were uh, doing like a sauna scene for a film, and just before the the camera was start to uh, was about to roll, uh, Rudger just reached over, flicked the end of the guy's dick just to mess with them, and then the camera camera started, and he just rolled with it. <laughs> so yeah, he was prone to doing doing weird off the cuff stuff just to mess with people. Oh, I'm glad you pointed that out because there's a ton of alpha male moves that Rucker pulls in this movie as well, which we'll get into. But yeah, the dick flick. We all know that. You'll have to convince me of this. But I saw a dick flick last night at the wrestling show. Some guy went off for a suplex and actually grabbed the guy's dick. The other thing I saw is someone took a grab of somebody's fucking thigh, just like eagle grab. It was, it was interesting. I was like, I've never seen anybody grab someone's oh. thigh like that. Just... You call it a mud show, but these guys were just brutal. They were beating the shit out of each other. It was a wonderful show. Very happy to have seen it. Anyways, Rucker. 
<laughs> Do we want to just jump right into this fucking movie? Let's get to the... Because it's going to take forever. Yeah. There's so much to talk yeah, about. Yeah, there's, like, so many questions. So many questions. And when we get to... When we get to... What's his name? It's uh, Harley Stone. Harley Stone. Great. Perfect name. Perfect. Perfect name. Because he rides a Harley, and he has Harley shit all, all over his over. house. All over. He's like much like your uh, buddy Doug. He just he actually has a fucking Harley motorcycle. Oh yeah, like Doug who just wears the gear. Yeah, apartment is very fitting for his standards. Very hoarder, and right. I can't I can't wait. We're gonna spend probably an hour just talking about his apartment. One thing we're not gonna spend, Griff, is a split second. Oh, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's, that's it. All I had. <laughs> <laughs> I unloaded a full clip, 450 Magnum, point blank. It disappeared. He can hear its heartbeat. Where'd he go? He knows it's out there. Somebody must have seen something. He knows what it can do. Are you telling me? There's something running around loose in this city, ripping the hearts out of people and eating them. Maybe he eats them for breakfast. Now it's really pissing him off. Foster! And his new partner. I work alone. Makes two. Paranoid people with guns are a menace to society. You'd be paranoid too if you had a dipshit like this following you. Stack of nonos and serial homicide. Oh, terrific. It has no motive. The only thing we know for sure is that he's not a vegetarian. It has the DNA structure of all its victims. It gives no warning. We're ready to die. But one thing's for certain. We're gonna get bigger guns! It ain't no pushover. Two, yeah! Bingo! We want to get to Cannon Street. <laughs> now you know. Yes, we do. Boy, are you pushy. Say this thing thinks it's Satan. I'd say it is Satan. Rat bastard! Satan is a deep shit. Get out of there! Ah. Five seconds! Okay! Four! Three! Oh. Two! Oh. 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 Rutger Hauer. Split second. Nice timing. Split second. London, 2008. After 40 days and nights of torrential rain, the city is largely submerged below water. Result of the devastating effects of continued global war. The warmings ignored for decades have now resulted in undreamt up levels of pollution where day has become almost endless night. Mm. And we come to, we got fucking Rucker Hauer, Harley Stone. They just call him Stone. Yeah. It's actually a joke he's later. Got stones. It's actually a joke later when someone finally hears his first name. But he's putting on his finest leather and finest little round shades. Yeah, even though we just, we, it's, it's an endless night. You don't need shade. It's but endless he's, night, he's first of all. And, okay, we're about to go outside into his little Jeep that's kind of shaped like a golf cart. I thought it was a golf cart, like a, <laughs> a, like a gator Well, that's a question something. I had. If you're, if you're, the, the streets are submerged. There's at least a foot of water. That's, you don't want to drive around in a fucking Jeep because you can get splattered all the time. And, Lee and he does get splattered all the time. <laughs> but he loves it. This is <laughs> it's filthy sewer water. What the fuck? This is the this is the stone. I'm sure Chris's colleagues over in London, that's how they hunt uh these spawn creatures too. I don't know what to call these guys. Venoms. So we, the venoms, okay. okay. So are we cool with just it's, calling them venoms? It's this it's Spider Man's nemesis venom with some wraparound shades. <laughs> Welded yeah. to his head. Yeah, according to the uh, to the guy who designed the uh, the suit for that thing, or one of the guys who worked on that, um, in the script it was left very vague as to what the monster was supposed to to look like or even be. So uh, the guy in charge of that just kind of uh, came up with like a cross between Alien, RoboCop, and Judge Death, um, or Judge I Doom. Sorry. And uh, and they just sort of stuck with that idea. 
I like it. What I don't like is leather running around in water. Water and leather don't go hand yeah, in hand. And I also very hard for a dude to pull off leather pants. Like I think the only guys who can really do it are like those super skinny rock star guys because if you're, if you're like an average size guy or bigger, they're all baggy and like yeah. look like fucking you're wearing garbage bags. Like Donald Trump. Yeah. Like Donald Trump suit. And even as, as, as svelte and as sexy as Rucker Howard, even he looks a little dumpy in these fucking baggy pants. Yeah. yeah it, 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 it had a flattering look on him. It, it made him look like he was 50 pounds heftier than he really was. Although that does fit with right. the character considering he lives off of donuts, <laughs> chocolate, and coffee. Yeah, and calling it coffee is definitely a stretch since it's 90% sugar. That was the inspiration for the Beastie Boys line. I like my uh, sugar with coffee and cream. It was a Rucker riff. <laughs> Anyways. So he, he dons the leather and the shades. Mm-hmm. He's a ba- he's blade. He's white blade. Yeah, okay. And he heads out. And he, I want to point out, he's been suspended. He's, he's doing this on his own. He's, just, he's obsessed with his case. That's right. So he heads out to the local titty bar, JJ, which has a neon sign that actually says nonstop strip tease above the door. I did non-stop. not see that. I, I thought that was the name of the bar, was nonstop strip tease. <laughs> and just as he's about to walk in, a Rottweiler just comes out of nowhere. Yeah. He's barking at him. Yeah, they had like a glory hole for the dog to pop out <laughs> of to spook people. Is this a horror house or is it a whore house? And he flashes the badge of the dog. The dog climbs down. Game recognized game. I love what is going on with the interaction. Because <laughs> <laughs> we see that Rucker interacts with animals, and it never really seems to come to fruition, does it, Chris? No, it, it really doesn't. It seems like there's supposed to be a lead in to him having like an almost psychic connection to, 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 to like the dog and, the, and a kid later, but nothing ever comes of it. Yeah. And even Dick is saying all the time, are you psychic? You gotta be psychic. He's like, I just feel things. He's like, that's what psychic is, you fucking moron. Yeah. So he knocks on the door, the secret knock, and it opens up, and the guy's like, you can come in. $50, 50 quid, as they say in England. Mm-hmm. And a two-drink minimum. I would have balked at the two-drink minimum. The 50 bucks, okay. Yeah. Two-drink, no. I'm sorry. I'll get one. Mm-hmm. But he, he accepts it, walks in. You see there's like a fucking pony girl on stage. I don't know what was going on with her shit. She had a leather mask on. Uh, yeah, and she like leaned into Rucker. They, know, they knew each other, yeah. Yeah, and she had like the cover on her mouth, and he like ripped it off? I thought he slapped her. Did he slap her? Uh, I, I remember her just pulling the, the cover off her mouth and just sticking her tongue out at him, and he made a face and turns away, and then later comes oh, back okay. and she's shaking her tits at him. Um, but uh, yeah. fun fact: they the the dancer uh, was uh, a lady named Tina Shaw, who apparently uh, was uh, uh, well known if you went into any sort of uh, sleazy uh, sleazy magazine shop. Uh, her tits were usually splashed all over all of the front covers back in the eighties. Oh. I, I thought I recognized. <laughs> and then Rucker did used to hang out at the porno shop. Rucker did. Flicker nipple as he walked by, but that was just a you know a nerver. I I want to bring up two characters who Rucker is giving mad vibes of: Cowboy and Mar from Sin City. Okay. See, are I, you I saying that, that this movie inspired Sin City and Hellboy? I think it might have had some inspirations. Who who was it that played Marv? Mickey Rourke. I could totally see Rucker at this. He age. was in Sin City. Oh, who, who, who he played was like the priest or some shit? That's right, yeah. the, the blind uh, Kevin or uh, Lord of the Rings kid. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember. It's been too long. Anyways, flicks and nip, flicks and nip, <laughs> goes straight. You know, we're in the far off future, two thousand eight. Has no cell phones, so he goes to the payphone. <laughs> yeah, and he he calls the dispatch. Even though he's he's been suspended, but he still calls up fucking the cops he's, to let him know he's there. And then a chick goes by, Hey, I got to take a dump. Can you watch the door for me? <laughs> but the fucking door is like two hallways away. Like how the fuck am I going to watch the door for you? Was it that far? Yeah. Also, so there's like, he goes one, one hallway turns right, goes another one. And then there's the fucking bathroom. I don't know if Rucker's uh, Rucker's taking uh, uh, liberties here or what, but every woman is winking at him. This is a very Steven Seagal thing. Cause she's like, Hey, Watch the door and gives a little nod to him. Like, come on in. Door's open. 
He's a consume. And this shows how consumed he is with this killer. He, he doesn't even notice her. He's like, "Sure, babe, whatever." Slaps her on the ass, and then he starts talking. And they're like, "Don't! You're not supposed to be there. What are you doing?" He's like, "I know he's going to be here. He's going to show up. I don't know how he knows he's going to be here. He knows he's going to be here." Oh. And he's looking at his watch. Split second. Split second. And of course, we're gonna we're gonna have to shriek out in horror, right, Chris? You know these cries. I've got recordings of them all over your house. Oh yeah, it, it, it is a glorious, uh, glorious shriek uh, that comes out of the bathroom, and uh, that right there is the sign that uh, that he was right. The killer's back, whatever that means in this in this context, because I don't think it's explained yet that uh, what the history is. Well, he is. He's mesmerized by some tits. First of all, so he's like he doesn't know what to do. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, shit, a scream. I better investigate that. <laughs> That's right, because he was just, like, walking at him closer and closer. <laughs> a, a waitress comes over, and she's like, two drink minimum. I'll take two coffees. Uh, those aren't drinks. And he's like, yeah, they are. You drink coffee. But, yeah, he's reaching out for those tits. They were going to him. He was drawn to him like a moth. And he hears a shriek, and he runs down two hallways to get to this bathroom that she's claiming the door is right there. Yeah, it's very complicated, the hallway, too. And I want to point out, do not... If you, I know you're going to want to watch this movie after this great review. Don't watch the YouTube version. It's all cut up. Watch the Tubi version. If you're a Prime member, it's free there. If you got Tubi, it's free there. It's everywhere. Don't watch it on YouTube. Blu-ray, if you need to get all the background information, we'll give you a good glimpse of that. But anyways... This was on Blu-ray? Into yeah, um, I was shocked. A couple of years ago, uh, somebody did a, a Blu-ray release of it that had a bunch of new interviews and also included the the rare Japanese cut uh, that had some missing scenes in it. Um, that I'll I'll get into when we get to where that those scenes would were supposed to to take place. Um, but yeah, no, it's a, it's actually a pretty good release. Uh, it was, uh, it's back in my living room. I think it was by MV Eight. In v- in v- S, um productions. They, it was just look up split second Blu-ray, you'll find it. <laughs> oh, I know they're professionals to take up this movie because it runs into the bathroom. We see the girl that was copping a squat. Her, her fucking heart's ripped out. Oh, and there's blood scattered all over this bathroom. Everywhere. And on the mirror it says, I'm back, baby. In blood. Ha- what? There's not. Was there even a window in this bathroom? How could it have gotten away? I don't know. Did he pull a run hide was, fight? Was, yes. Did he get into the was ceiling? There a drop ceiling. I I don't know. We're not, we're not monster experts. We really aren't. Oh, he runs out to the crowd. He suspects everybody. He's super paranoid. Oh yeah, he's got his gun out now. He's putting it at everybody's face. He's convinced the dog saw something. <laughs> he's apparently. They, they, there's this little thing where they apl- imply that animals and children can see the monster. Everyone, first of all, everyone can see the fucking monster. He's not invisible. <laughs> but they're implying that they have the sixth sense. At least he thinks they do. And he does have a sixth sense because he can hear the heartbeat of this creature. Well, maybe what they're implying is that the monster is like a person of color where he's not literally blind, but we still just <laughs> oh, are <laughs> invisible. But we just don't see it's him. It's true because... that children and animals can see black people. <laughs> so you're right. It's very true. And, yeah. Well, so, most yeah, he's walk free... by most people walk by hobos on the street without taking another glance. If it is a mutant hobo, maybe it still has that special ability. <laughs> you're onto something. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. And yeah, mutant you, you, hobo. Right. I'm really starting to understand your research now, <laughs> and I'm an idiot. So this is this is coming together. Own runs outside in the alleyway. Just starts firing a gun. I say yo. Yeah. So he's got hallucinations, hallucinations now, and we're starting to hear uh, this loud thudding heartbeat. Yeah. Like everything's just coming. Like this is this is intense. And then he just has an anxiety attack and just collapses. And then I think like cops. A two were on a boat because remember London is submerged, even though. All the shots they show, it's just it's just London, real London in nineteen two. <laughs> yeah, they just with had one street on. that they flooded, and uh, and that was about all they could get away with. And then the rest of it was just just them driving around normal London at night. Right. <laughs> I think it was the same alleyway that the kid walked down from the Zark. Zark uh, yeah. I and that was a very wet alley. I saw that too. I I thought I saw the little uh, uh, orphanage too. The little sign right. that yeah. 
Yeah, you turn the wrong corner, you're going to end up in a jungle. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's where you are. <laughs> so we're on a boat, and we see our our, our new character that Griff loved. I hated him. I lo- I loved him. Little Dicky Durkin, <sighs> who is a, a serial killer expert. Yes. He's been, he went to the University of Phoenix. He knows his shit. Oh, yeah. He's basically the guy from Mindhunter. Mindhunter? Zach? Yeah, I got it right. Yeah. Or Manhunter, because or they're Man the Hunter. same way. Okay. And they're on a boat, and he's getting the deets on our man, Harley Stone. I like this way to give us a little background on Stone. This is a good way to get that exposition on him. We learn that a serial killer, this same serial killer that he's searching for now, killed his partner, Foster. And it just coincided with the fact when he was banging for his his best friend's fucking wife. What the fuck? How are we supposed to care about a Stone, our hero, when he's an adulteress of his best Adulterer. friend? Adulterer, excuse me. Because like, he's complicated. That's what we're f- fleshing out. And like I said, alpha male to the max. He is banging his fucking. He loves his partner, still banging the wife. <laughs> he does. And then he, then when he, then his partner dies, he dumps her. Yeah, he dumps her and just hits the bottle. <laughs> Pure machismo. He cr- right. Yeah, but he cries, Macho. All right, let, let, let's get a temperature check on where everybody's at with Stone right now. We just learned about his horrible background. Thumbs up or thumbs down? I totally relate to him. So yeah, Chris, thumbs up or thumbs down? Uh, thumb sideways. Mm. He's, he's, wow, he's, we're split. Yeah, he's he's supposed to be the main character, so you're thinking to yourself, okay, maybe there's a redemption arc, a redemption arc uh, at at some point throughout this. So he has a is a scummy background, so so maybe maybe it's it, it's the foundation for for a respectable character later on. So I I, I hear him out on that. Meet him okay. halfway. So you, yeah. Oh, meet me halfway across the sky. That's the whole message of my favorite movie, Over the Top. So I'm all thumbs down I'm here. I'm all thumbs up. We're all split but, decision. But I, I like this because, yeah, it is his story. Maybe he has hit rock bottom, and he's finally going to work his way back up. Well, all we know is now he lives on anxiety, coffee, and chocolate bars, which clearly says he's got a drug problem, Griff. We learned this. What are you talking No, he said he's got an alcohol problem. What are you talking about? No, dude. Coffee and chocolate, heroin. It just screams heroin. Maybe he's... Maybe he's off of it now. He's, he's, he's supplementing his heroin Jones with chocolate and coffee, but he's had that in the background. Oh, my God. And you're our drug expert, of course. Right, you do yeah. the math and you do the drugs. <laughs> right. So is there anything that would explain his overcompensation now? Because, again, he's just fucking doing the coffee drop with the pound of sugar. Is that him trying to keep the heroin away? Yes, I think so. Or maybe he's just maybe he feels like he wants to do heroin, and he's like, I have to stop it, nip it in the bud before I even do He's compulsive now. Okay. Yeah. It, wow. Okay. So this character really is more uh, layers than I thought he was. This, right. is, this is way beyond a Seagal character. Right. Holy shit. And he's like, oh, and by the way, he's your new partner. <laughs> and then we cut to Stone freaking the fuck out in lockup. <laughs> He's like, get me my chocolate and my coffee. He's constantly like, coffee. Oh, my God. He's going through withdrawals. Yes. Oh. But they release him and they give him a gun immediately. I, I do like, he's got the warrior bar shake. Right. Yeah. Well, I love the scene. They hand him a gun, and he immediately hands it off again to somebody else. A woman who winks yes. at him. And he walks into the uh, the bullpen. I don't know what they call where the, the cops work. Yeah. And uh, you is... see that there's this fucking geek who has some beef with fucking Stone. Doesn't yeah. appreciate the way he works. We get the shot of Paulson in the background. We're watching... We, we we know that he has this obsession with coffee at this point, but we're seeing him pour his first cup right yeah. here. And my God, uh, uh, Dougie Jones, excuse me, Agent <laughs> Cooper would not appreciate this cup of coffee no. because he does just rip the top off the sugar, <laughs> pour it into a styrofoam cup. Which well, no, it, it was like a machine. It was a machine. And they, they, had, they actually the... had a sugar dispenser. Oh, they did. That's yeah. right. Yeah, there's a pink red out. button for, for sugar and another red button for hot water. And in between, there's like three different coffee options. He just goes straight for the sugar, fills up half the cup with uh, half the cup with sugar, and then skips all the coffee and goes straight to the hot water, which comes out brown. 
Hey, I noticed that too. I was like, where's the coffee at? <laughs> See, this is why we got to have Chris on because there's so many weird details in this movie. Oh, God. Oh, my God. It's a magic cup or something. It creates coffee. And you know, he always drinks out of filthy ass mugs, too. If it's not, if it's not like a paper, like, like, uh, Starbucks cup, it's a filthy, gross mug. I, I yeah. Think he just well, steals mugs off of people's desks and drinks with them. <laughs> Yeah, there's so a, there's yes. a scene later on where he just has a where he leaves a mug behind in the bathroom and never comes back for it. <laughs> yes. yes, I love that. Again, that's another Rucker just being Rucker scene, and I love Speaking that. Speaking of scene. Rucker being Rucker, now we we notice this Paulson guy's got tension because he was friends with Foster, his partner. Yeah. And Rucker, as he's not being accountable about it, he's just like, hey, shit happens. I banged his wife. So what? <laughs> oh, my God. It's, <laughs> it's impossible not to notice when fucking Stone walks in the room. He's got to stink <laughs> to high heaven. You have to hear the sugar pouring into the cup like sand. It, but, yeah, so you just got Paul's and, like, turning his shoulder like, ah, this guy. And this is a straight alpha male move that Stone does. He grabs the pen out of the shirt pocket. He's a nerd, so he's got that pocket protector. Yeah, it's like a gold fancy yeah, pen. Of it's got his name etched into it. It's got his rank etched to it. And he's giving Stone the business. He's telling him, you're a complete fuck. You went and banged your best friend's uh, wife, and then you ran away <laughs> on her. Everything he's doing is the truth. But hey, you know, he can't handle the truth, so he's going to so pull this gl- alpha move. Pulls the pulls the pen, which of course we all know it's a fucking symbolic for a dick. He's yeah. basically grabbing Paulson's dick, flicking it, and then stirs his coffee with the pen. Basically, I'm going to put your dick in hot water. Is what I'm already saying. That's, that's what he's saying. Yeah. Oh. Well, we all know it. We all we know what a, a pen means to a man. We all carry a pen around. We know right. what that is. We, it, <laughs> my dad, when I turned 13, he was like, "You're a man now. Here's a pen." You know, your dad never did that to you. No, he never did that to me. Right. I didn't love you. And so he's just like, yeah, it's just like. You're my bitch, is basically what he's saying to Paulson. And Paulson backs down. He's angry, but he backs down. And just you think there's going to be some fisticuffs, and then you hear from the captain. It wasn't black. It should have been black. It was, it was a captain. He goes, Stone, get in here! And then we see the captain. I swear to God, I thought it was Paulson. These guys, these actors look so alike. Yeah. I actually had to rewind and go, what's good <laughs> fuck's going on? <laughs> no, it's just another ugly English guy with balding, balding head. And he's just fucking, he's, he's the captain, so he's got a real, he, he reads in the riot act and gives him his badge back, which is a total flip of the script. Yeah. He's like, you're out of control. Here's your badge. <laughs> you're out of control. <laughs> and he's like, you're too close to this. Yeah, everything we've heard from every captain. Yeah. Dick is like in the corner, like, you know, yeah, watching, yeah. observing. So did they, I don't remember, did they actually... Why? Why did they give uh give him his gun and badge back? Was there actually a good reason for <laughs> no, it, Chris? I, no, I don't. I, I'm in the same boat as you. I don't know why they give him his gun and badge back when he's clearly neurotic, and uh, and is is too invested in this particular case. Yeah. Uh, I think I think well, actually that... maybe the the only ex- like the only excuse he gives is well he's the best and and here you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing they go over his spiel about how fucking nuts he is like they read his whole psych profile yeah and he's like that's bullshit yeah they say they say he have uh neurosis anxiety and stone just throws it in his face he's like fuck that doctors don't know shit i do my own research and they're like well i can't argue with that <laughs> that's, just, that's just smart yeah, and then they ask him how many guns do you have and he just Whittles off all these sci-fi gun names so that, you know, I can't keep track of. And then he's like, wow, you think you'd have a grenade launcher? Oh, can you get me one? And I love this about no, he Dick. says, I don't have a permit. Oh, is that it? Says. Yeah, I couldn't get the permit. Oh, because I just know that Dick's in the background giggling. He's, <laughs> he's loving this. Because he's an he's a, uh, Oxford kid, you know? He's right. got the tie he's on. Geek. He's a geek. So hearing this guy stand up to the captain, he was into it. And he's like, this is your partner. By the way, this is your new partner. Oh, yeah. You're going to go back on the street, but you're doing it under my new rules. You got a partner. And like every lone wolf cop, he goes, I work a Fuck that. And he's like, if I have to, well, I'm going to take some of these cigars. And he opens up the captain's cigar and takes another baller alpha male move. He doesn't take two cigars, one cigar. He takes the entire fucking contents in the cigar <laughs> box and just walks out. Oh. Which he lights with a fucking torch. Way oh. more baller than a Zippo grip. 
This is very true. You're probably <laughs> yeah, very happy about he that. Had, he had it turned all the way up. It was like a, a little, like you said, a torch just lighting up in his face. It's a wonder he didn't singe an <laughs> eyebrow with that thing. And then they like, walks out, and then Paulson goes, oh, by the way, fuck face. There's, would you send for a six-pack? What well, there was a fucking cooler on your desk. And we know he was an alcoholic. So right. everybody, like Paulson thinks, we got you, motherfucker. Like, who gets beer sent <laughs> in a cooler to their desk? Badass cops, Bad- old cops. I mean, he did just steal all of his boss's <laughs> cigars right in front of him. Probably took his pen, too. Right. <laughs> Force Dick to suck on it. Oh, yeah. On the topic of, of the pen, there's actually a little a, a little throwaway shot that happens just before the cooler scene uh, where Durkin hands, uh, hands Rutger his pen so that he can stir yet another cup of coffee with it. Wow. That's oh. such a submissive bitch move. He's like, take it, sir. Holy shit. Wow. He's, he's, he's dominated this dude. He's, he's just pissed on him. It, this is this is, <laughs> this is is his office. We're supposed to believe that he is thrown all over town, all across the world because he's too unruly and everything, but he keeps getting hired, kind of like bad cops <laughs> in America. And he just walks in the office and fucking rules the place. I love it. Okay, okay, I'm kind of moving to the middle ground now. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> He's like, wait, I don't get my beer sent to my, the office. I get sent it home. What's up with that cooler? It up. He's sober. He's straight edge now. Right. Come on. He's got the taped up hands <laughs> with the X's on it and everything. And uh, it shows how not committed he is that he doesn't, he has to put tape. That's right. 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 So he's, he's. It's, no, it's more symbolic. It's to show people he's still going with the struggle. Okay. You know? And he opens it up. He's like, well, if there's a beer, I'll drink it. Opens it up, and it's a heart on ice. It wasn't even latched closed. No. It just opened up all by itself. Was it automated? <laughs> Again, is this sci-fi? A heart with a bite taken out. Mm, big bite. Big ass bite. So big that the captain's like, get a fucking dental mold on that fucking heart bite. That doesn't look right. Yeah. And then we just... Cut to, I think this is where we, what Chris was talking about. We see, we have the scene where he gives his pen to Stone. Stone goes, "You're a good boy." Pats him on the head, <laughs> stirs his coffee. Yeah, I and think. And we go back to Jay. You got to go back to the scene of the crime, Greg. But they can't. Okay, Stone is still so uh, reluctant to have a partner that he doesn't. He, he can't be seen in the same car with his dork. Yeah. So he's like, "Do you have a car?" Good. You can follow me if you can keep up. But they all go like 20 miles an hour because it's fucking flooded ass street. No, they're going like 50 miles an hour. So they're getting, shit's just splattering them. And this is like, he's got little windshield wipers on his glasses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a wonder he's not choking out the engine from all the water he's driving through at that speed. Um, but yeah, this is also the point where, where Durkin explains his, his highly educated Edinburgh Oxford background to, 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 uh, to Stone, who just looks disgusted and has him, and, and then tells him to drive off on his own. <laughs> yeah, he's, off. He's, got, he's got his credentials out, because yeah. he, he realizes he's not getting the respect he deserves. Yeah. He's like, I went to University of Phoenix. I got a major in, <laughs> in serial killers. Jeez. <laughs> I did it online at my own pace. <laughs> oh, my God. I just you got seen my that commercial <laughs> recently or something? <laughs> it was on all the fucking time. Oh, is it? And know. so, yes, they go back to the scene of crime, JJ's. Or oh. as I called it, nonstop strategic. That's <laughs> what I thought it was called. I like, oh, my God, I love this scene. Because it's it's during the day, and a- Although it's called nonstop strip tease, <laughs> I didn't see any action happening here. No, what's closed down for a murder? It's a crime scene. Oh, they actually closed it down. Well, they, they, yes, they had the fucking chalk outline. Well, you don't, don't you think that the detectives want some live action too? <laughs> maybe maybe big, in another room, the back, the champagne room. They're doing maybe, that. but they. I just want to say, detectives are going to have more money than the fucking schlocks that we saw there before. I'd be out dancing. Well, I don't know. If you got to pay 50 bucks to get in, you must be a high roller. And well, two drink minimum. Well, clearly, they don't have to pay because they're just flipping their wad. I mean, wallet. I mean, badge. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So this, this is a high clientele. This is $50. Yeah. So we get a nice shot. We get the Twin Peaks shot where it's just a guy pushing a broom for 15 minutes. And then he, he, he does a manhunter where he lies down in the chalk outline to kind of just absorb what happened yeah chris uh is that something you often do is that is that something the cryptozoologist hunters do is just like lie down in a murder scene 
Yeah, that's that's honestly it helps you get into the mindset of what the last thing the uh, the victim would have seen when you uh, w- when they okay. finally left this this earthly realm, and it helps you get okay. into the mindset of well, what, what what happened from here? Maybe where did the killer go? What happened? That type of deal, um, and all of that, and, and also it, the um, the cleared out bar scene also gives you a good good look at the fact that all of the walls are just corrugated steel. Like you'd see on like an old West uh, West Town roof, it's yeah. it's very very cheaply made, very industrial. I don't know if I'd lie down on a club bathroom floor, but oh no, he, he's a manhunter. He's getting into it, and then the owner comes in with the Rottweiler, and he, and Rucker looks at him like I know you know I know you're holding out on me, Rottweiler. There's a little tete a tete between them. Yeah, they're face to face because he's lying on the ground. The Rottweiler right. is just smiling it up. <laughs> And he does know something. And the Rottweiler looks up at the drop ceiling, and Rucker looks at the drop ceiling, and they're both just like, motherfucker. I knew it was a run-hide fight situation. I knew we got a fucking crawler up there. So he walks out again. There is a Rucker disc we need to talk about here, because the club owner pipes up, what the fuck are you doing in my bathroom? He says, I was speaking to your secretary. And then he feeds the dog. He pulls what looks like a chocolate bonbon out of his jacket pocket and feeds it to the dog. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to ask uh, one of our future guests about this. What the fuck is a rah rah? Is that real? <laughs> I want to believe it, it was, is. Yeah, I think it was the name of of just a donut shop around here, around there. Because uh, all throughout the movie, he's pulling donuts out of those rah rah bags that he that he carries around everywhere. Uh, most of which are probably like weeks old by the time he's getting to them. Oh my god, yeah. Maybe he likes them a little stiff, a little stale. I thought, I thought he had like that, and then I thought he had like those mallow treats. I think they were chunk, chunkies. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the worst candy of all. <laughs> so many raisins bad... and like, <laughs> shit. Oh, yeah. Well, at least you get uh, the fruit food group in there too. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's how he doesn't get scurvy. Yeah. He has a chunky every once in a while. <sighs> and he walks out. We see he made Dirk wait outside. Dirk shining up the headlight because he's been splashing through filth water. And what you need to notice about Dick is he's got like not they're not waders or anything, but they're boots, galoshes, pol- galoshes and he's got his pants tucked in because he's wearing a suit. You know, he's got the Oxford right. tie. He's an Oxford man, right. and he's cleaning off the headlights. And what the fuck are you doing? Ninety percent of all traffic accidents are caused by uh, 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 fogged up headlights. And he and then he just shoves a. Big old chunky right on that headlight and walks away. Mm. Oh. It's like I said, it's just alpha male shit, man. <laughs> so they yeah. get a call. There's another murder. What's yeah, that, the the the, uh, the topic of of Durkin's suit. I'd like to point out that most of the people in this film dress very plainly, very normally, suits, office attire. Like even in the club scene, there were people just in polo shirts with balding haircuts, just wandering around. And then and then in walk stone, dressed in like all leather with like this uh the Lord Humongous <laughs> cross belt, studded belt thing that he has going on. Uh so he, he, he like his outfit does not match anyone else's in the entire film, and it's great. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Are you saying I thought everybody in two thousand eight was wearing that? I wore that. <laughs> I had the fucking baggy leather pants <laughs> and the fucking cross belt. Oh yeah, that is in the crawl. I was gonna say, do, do, did we express that this is two thousand eight? Yeah, far yeah. future two thousand. Yeah, this is the the, the cataclysmic future of two thousand eight. Griff, it, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. That's called back to Noah, all right? This is some biblical shit. Yeah. You know that biblical shit is my worst Jeopardy category. Yeah, I know. I guess Job, Jacob, and Jillian every time. I think Jillian's in the Bible. And so they get a call for another There's another murder, guys. I think it's the killer. The heart was ripped out. Oh. It's got to be him. So they go to the scene of the crime. Yep, they've arrived. There's an audience outside. They're all just fucking, you know, crowd. And, I would say with the audience and <laughs> and stone in, the, in the parking lot. Yeah, that had to be a fuck up. I don't think they planned that because Rucker gets out and gives him a look. Yeah, uh, he's like, you think it was a fuck up, Chris? 
I I think it originally was, and then they just decided to roll with it because it was too good to pass up. Was right. that's what I, it shows how incompetent Dick Durkin is. You know, we 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 talk about the punk rock feel of a lot of these movies. You're like, stop cleaning up movies. Allow things to look natural. And this that scene looked very natural, and the look Rucker gave him was very well. He was probably worried about getting whiplash. Because I mean. You're the star. You got to wear that heavy leather and slosh around in rainwater. Wet leather is even worse. Wet leather is the absolute word. You know, he had some rash. Dude. I got to tell you, I was really pissed today. I was going Chasing. over to my leather shop. It's right behind the Chick fil A near us. And I get behind that Chick fil A. Chick fil A trash everywhere scattered across this parking lot. As if a parking lot are, are, aren't a, ugly enough. Fucking Chick Fil A trash everywhere. Sorry for that. <laughs> Sorry, I was very upset about that. Segue. I did. I couldn't even buy the leather pants afterwards. They just didn't feel right anymore. And you had them altered and everything, so they fit snugly. Cradled yep. your balls. It was fucking amazing. Yep, that's right. And so we're at the scene of the crime. There's a body laying there. They're looking at all the evidence and. Yeah, uh, what's his name? Durkin's like on the bed, looking up at the ceiling, and he's like, "Well, there's a there's a a jump scare. There's a rat pop. Oh, this is first, okay? Yeah, like they're talking, and then Stone just pulls out a gun and like fires at Durkin. He's like, "What the fuck? There was a little rat puppet behind you." Because there's this there's a subplot that never really gets touched on in this movie about there's a rats are everywhere now thanks to global warming. Yeah, there's signs in the background and everything too. Hey, Chris, did you actually slow down and look at one of those signs? I know I didn't. So yeah, uh, <laughs> beware the rat plague was one of the signs that pops up everywhere, uh, and there were okay. some other ones for for um, like wear your gas mask uh, elsewhere. There, in another scene, there's um, um, uh, like uh, just air dispensers for for like if you're getting choked yes. out or something. I guess. Um, yes. But, yeah, he doesn't just shoot the mutant rat. He has a hand cannon, and he blows a crater in the wall behind behind Dirk, and it's it, it's it is boys gone. It is, and Dirk it just, was just intense. like shrugs it off. He just flicks a little piece of, of gore off his shoulder and goes, "Oh, I hate rats." And that was it. <laughs> well, uh, as it, they're warming up to each other. As Murray know? has brought up, Dick's already a total simp for him. <laughs> right. You know. He's put his life right in his hands after knowing him for five minutes. They're looking at the scene of the crime. They notice a familiar gun. It's all rusty and fucked up. Yeah. And he's like, that looks familiar. I think that's my, my partner's gun. Check. He goes to Paulson. They're like, Paulson, come here. Yeah. Get this gun looked at. Yeah, this comes up in a minute because, like, blood starts stripping on him. And they're right. like, what the fuck is going on? They look up at the ceiling, and there's a super intricate, <laughs> like, what do we call these things? Yeah, it wasn't quite say, a pentagram. It was an inverted triangle in a circle with uh, the Scorpio symbol drawn inside yeah. of it. And I'm, I, I honestly am not quite sure what those are, are called specifically. Um, but I, it, it's funny that uh, the basically there was like an army of police officers and detectives running around outside, running in and out, and nobody noticed it until they, they looked up and saw it. Chris, it was a ten foot ceiling. All right, it's ten feet uh, tall. It's, it's too high. It yeah, was even you higher hurt than your that. Neck looking up that far. <laughs> exactly. It had to be higher than ten feet because you would have to stretch ten feet when stepping on the bed. We're talking like thirteen feet. Wow. That that's a ce- like. Look at my I ceiling. What the rent is? That's a high ceiling. Uh, exactly you know, in in London, two thousand eight London, post global warming. And this is where Dick gets to shine and show off a little of that University of Phoenix education. Yes. He's like, that's clearly the astrological sign for Scorpio. And over there, the 24 and the 78, I don't know what that means. 25. 25, you're right. 25, 78. I'll figure that out later. I don't know. <laughs> and then there's, like you said, there's this pentagram-ish ish kind of thing up there. And he's just like, yeah, I know, what, I know that. Right. So what I've learned is that Basically, any 20-year-old woman living in America today could tell us all about the astrology oh, yes. signs. Probably about the inverted uh, triangle. Why? Because like uh, like our boy Stone, they're a little psychic. 
Exactly. All young women have a little bit of the psychic power. That's exactly intuition. it. Intuition. Women's intuition. What was that first guy who used to do the crossing over show where you talk to dead people? I don't know. I know you're talking about. But Fuck, I my was... mom. Every day my mom will watch that oh shit. God. She believed in it so hard. Oh, oh. my God. Oh my god! Oh boy! So yeah, he runs into Paulson. They he's like, "Hey, here's those that teeth mold you were asking yep. about." And he's like, "Oh, oh yeah, thanks. Check, get this gun looked at." He's like, "I'm not your fucking bitch." Yeah, he's the only I, guy who, like stands up to fucking. He really you know, does. Stone. He really. <laughs> <laughs> he's like his only contemporary in, in the office. He's the only person who calls him out on his shit. And he he's gets... like Ferris Bueller's sister. He's the only one that sees through Stone's bullshit. Yeah, and he's. So, like, Paulson wants to solve this case, so he goes along with everything <laughs> because he actually cares. And still, we, you know what? Thumbs down again. I'm out of the middle. I'm down to thumbs down. I don't like Stone right now. So Stone, he looks at the imprint. It's clearly some kind of beast. Yeah. Venomish. Oh gigantic God. teeth. Or it's Gary Busey. It's just giant fucking teeth. God. And he's just like, fuck, man, what is this? Are these teeth imprints, like... Are you do you have to be careful with them, Chris? I imagine your bookshelves are just lined with them. I mean, of course, you're hunting all these mythical beasts. Yeah, yeah. You you have to take a lot of plaster casts of any piece of evidence you find. Um, just just for the record, because oftentimes uh, things will things will deteriorate pretty quickly. Like the hearts, you can't keep those on ice forever. Uh, foot, oh. like Bigfoot footprints, those naturally get washed away or, or cleared out or whatnot. Um, the only thing, the only samples you can really keep for a while are, are, are Zark, Zark the pubes, because those, <laughs> those you just keep in a jar and you're good. <laughs> and then does he start hearing the heartbeat again? Because he starts like firing a gun off. Yeah, and he's like he's watching. Is he know he hears that heartbeat and, and that's and he is watching. The killer is like taunting. He like he's watching everything because as far as we know right now as the viewer, we think it's just a serial killer. We have no idea it's this creature outside of the dental fucking things. But that could have been some weird apparatus he wears. We don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, are we are we willing to believe in Stone? Because he's he looks pretty fucking crazy. Yeah, well, we we know he's possibly possibly a heroin addict. We know for a fact he's an alcoholic. We're yeah. Covering. And he has these prone anxiety attacks. And you identify as him. Totally. So, yeah. so you're going along with him yeah. and this monster. I'm not believing him at all. Well, what you're going to believe is we go back to the HQ. After a full day of eating nonstop chocolate and coffee, you got to brush your teeth. He is brushing his teeth with sugar, <laughs> but he's brushing his teeth. We're like in a communal. I think it was the bathroom from class in 1984 because it's a very big bathroom. Communal spittoon type thing. Wash, uh, uh, hand fountain. Yeah. Hand fountain. I love that with the with the ring that you have to step on to start <laughs> it up. Brushing his teeth with sugar, wishes it cleans it out with a nice mouthful of coffee. Oh, is this Putting... not one of the highlights of this film though? <laughs> like this is another scene where Rucker is just Ruckering. There's something something really entertaining about watching Rutger Hauer brushing his teeth in a communal bathroom while taking a swig of, of coffee or most likely just sugary mud water that he brewed oh. up in somebody else's coffee mug. Like throughout the whole rest of the film, he's drinking out of styrofoam cups, except for this one scene where he has an actual mug uh, that he probably <laughs> stole off of somebody's desk and just has it, it sitting awesome. up on the fountain with him. He's just taking a Dude. drag off a cigarette while he's doing it too, while um, oh. while Durkin's trying to uh, trying to plot dump on him or or, or asking <laughs> stuff. Oh, God. And as we learned from Lethal Weapon, the best way to think is at the gun range. I don't know how you think and talk <laughs> in a gun range of all places. Did you 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 specify what what is this gun range called, Chris? Yeah, I. This was one of those cases where I had to pause it and rewind it to, just so I made sure I read it correctly. the The name of the gun range is the PMS Shooting Range. Start shooting like styrofoam targets. They're these very chunky targets. It wasn't like a piece of paper, like a lethal weapon. And he's just they're 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 like brainstorming. They're like, what's what's going on with this? Yeah, yeah. His targets are supposed to be like concrete slabs. <laughs> And when after, he's got basically a lawgiver from Judge Dredd, so he's just blow, blasting yeah, off. Yeah, it's Hellboy's gone. It's the right. fucking lawgiver. <laughs> it's any of those super exaggerated cannon. Um, 
but as he brings it in, you can see there's supposed to be like rebar poking out of it and everything. It's 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 wonderful. And they're like they're stumped because there's, there's no connection to these victims. They're random people. Well, Dick's trying to say that maybe they're related, and I, they, it's just nothing's really coming together. So, where is Dick or Stone gonna go? He's gonna go to where he thinks best. He's gonna visit his old best friend, the yeah, dead one. And, and on uh, as he's leaving, uh, Durkin follows him out, and uh, and he's leading, uh, walking into the parking lot, and Stone just chucks. Yet another styrofoam cup of coffee. Like, he left the mug in the bathroom and he just stole another one, another person's coffee cup off their desk. He just tossed it, it into, his, into the passenger sheet, seat of his Jeep, spilling half of it onto the seat while he's doing it, uh, and, <laughs> and demands for Durkin's keys, to which he pulls out a little wrestler keychain with one key <laughs> on it. I was a Lex Luger doll, dude. I think was positive it was Lex Luger. Well, you could tell because he's uh, playing with his, his penis. Dick. Yeah. yeah, and then this is the, this is he's gonna burn Durkins by going. You don't have your keys now. It takes off ten feet away, throws the keys back. Like you're supposed to take the keys with you, so he can't follow it just, you. It drops it in the in like a foot of water, so he has to go go looking for it. And he mentions my girlfriend, who I have sex with every night, gave me that keychain. Huh? And he's like touch a woman in your life and just takes off ah oh, you see you really do identify with him because he's jealous and you're jealous because dick is getting laid and you're just like what the fuck oh please <laughs> so so stone like you said he goes to his zen garden which is the mausoleum of his par- ex-partner dead mm-hmm. partner that filled with water yet they find time to light a million candles there's a million candles well, everywhere. Well, they live with the water now. That's their life. Look, we're going through that right now here in Michigan. We have <laughs> flash floods all the time. Global warming is upon so, us. So you're telling me the infrastructure bill didn't go through in 2008. Because they should, be, they should have a pump or some, some system. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's one future. guy with a pump. Remember, this is the future. Yeah. 2008, Chris. Right. All right. We're not talking about 2021. Yes. At the year we're in, 2021. That sounds good. And so he's about to uh, put some feathers, because that's what you do on your, your, your fucking... <laughs> Was this another Rucker touch? Yes, this is definitely yeah. a Rucker Chris, touch. Chris, Rucker touch? Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he probably just like wandered around outside, found a handful of loose pigeon feathers, and just came in to shove them <laughs> in the flower face in front of his, his uh, partner's memorial. He, he, he still had them in his pocket from uh, Blade Runner. Oh, he has him from his apartment. He's fucking. He's probably oh, found yeah. him in his pocket. <laughs> well, wait. Isn't there a saying, "Birds of a feather flock together"? Isn't is that kind of like him saying, "Like we were birds of you know"? I just think I don't know. Only Rocker knows, and he's not along <laughs> with us. <laughs> oh my god! So the- just as about to, he notices a, a, a sexy woman, Kim Cattrall, who playing uh, Michelle, the f- wife that he banged, <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, why?" <laughs> It was, it was an awkward move when you fuck a, a, a widow and then you bail on her. It's a little awkward. And you're right? both visiting the right. fucking person you were cheating on? <laughs> yes. Yeah? A little awkward. A little bit. I would like to see the Larry David or uh, the Curb Your Enthusiasm episode, uh, you know, with this plot in it. And she still, she can tell she still has the hots for him because she's just like, why don't we go to your play? Talk over whatever you're going. Oh, yeah, he's trying to put the feathers in, and she's reaching out for his hand, and she's hugging on him. It's been it's been a little while. It's been a while. Sings the whole song to him. <laughs> it's 2008. That song was a hit. I think that's when that song was and a I hit. I noticed she has, she's got a very weird kind of haircut going on, and yeah. I, I looked it up. So was, yeah, yeah. The I was reason she... I to mention the same thing um, it is because she was uh, just still fil- she was still filming Star Trek VI. And she still had the Vulcan oh. haircut from that. Yeah. So oh. that's why the sides were a little shaved. I was, she was playing a Vulcan. I mean, I was just into it, so I didn't care. But I was like, oh, that's weird. Her sides uh. are shaved. But it just looked like the Pulp Fiction haircut or, or the Uma Thurman. So he's like, let's go home and talk about it. Go home. Because he hasn't fucked in a while. And Durkin reminded him, you know, he gets laid all the time. So you're probably right. Well, I was a little jealous of that. So yeah. Like, I got once again, it's all about alpha moves. He's like, I have to bang the first chick I find to get back at Dick. Yeah, and I imagine he's got cameras everywhere, but if we're going to go into the details of his apartment, which we're about to, Chris, 
Please, I know you have analyzed this room over and over again. Can you please help us out with this? Yeah, I, I had to room. pause and rewind so many times just to, to take in all of the weird crap that, that he has laying around his apartment. So first off, and this becomes a bit more important later on, he, he lives on the fourth floor of whatever, build, whatever abandoned uh, factory building he decided to take up residence in. Um, mm. He has a... A uh, little box TV that's just tuned to whatever station ha- is playing static. Uh, there's pigeons flying everywhere because all of his windows are broken. Uh, he <laughs> has a uh, he has several Harley Davidson signs just all over the place, including a Harley Davidson calendar hanging on his fridge. Um, he has not one but two Harley Davidson motorcycles under tarps in his apartment that he somehow managed to get up four flights of stairs on his own. Uh, I mean, you can't ride them anymore. The streets are flooded. Yeah, it's dangerous. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, He just, (laughs) like, the light switch for for his apartment is just hanging loose from the ceiling like uh, like a loose, um, like, metal shop light. Uh, He has some sort of six-foot-tall bug zapper just in the middle of his floor. It's like some sort of weird fluorescent light with... Yeah, it was um it was in the shot where uh, Kim Cattrall's uh, like grabbing the light switch and flicking it on. Okay. It was right there behind her and I I I had to pause and try to figure out what the hell that thing was supposed to be cuz it it was in the middle of the floor. You don't put a fluorescent light in the middle of the is, yeah. Um and uh, yeah, he keeps uh, keeps his guns and ammunition inside of a refrigerator for some reason. And yeah. he has two of well, them. Well, so did Cobra around. did that, too. Cobra, That's what you Cobra did. did it, too. That's how you roll. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, Kim Control's uh, asking, it's pretty musty in here. How about you open up a window or something? And so he just kicks open a random door and a wind machine yeah, there's a door! <laughs> Go outside! It's got a balcony. But he says the windows are all broken. Well, then that would be letting air in, wouldn't it, if the windows were broken? Exactly. I, <laughs> or, is he, or is he saying they don't open? I, I thought he was saying they don't open, but that doesn't explain the pigeon. So they <laughs> have to be broken by context clues, right? I don't know. The guy's got a door in a wall that goes off. To, it's, it's weird. He, he's clearly a hoarder. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's got auto part. That door, might just, that door might just lead to a Dario Argento film like Suspiria or something where it's always windy as fuck no matter what time of day it is. I, I love that. What she uh, even mentioned, she's like, What's with the pigeons? He's like, I can't kill them. I can't <laughs> kill them. So I was like, Wait, you mean you literally, like, by honor, you can't kill them? Like, I'll kill rats, but I won't kill pigeons? I couldn't figure this out. Nah, and she there, couldn't either. There's some more weird shit going on when we eventually explore, like, his hallway to his bathrooms. Because is there not two distinct bathrooms? I didn't pick up. Yeah, that okay. one I actually missed. You might be right okay. on that. Because there's the scene where she's taking the shower, and that's like a porcelain tub. And then there's the scene after she gets attacked where she's in, like, a fucking uh, aluminum tub or something where the water's just overflowing. Yeah, so, yeah you well, might actually be onto something there. <laughs> so, That's why I moved in. Two bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, like, he's wasted. He's had a hell of a night, so he just passes out. He also uh, he has uh, told Michelle at the mausoleum... I haven't slept in like four days or something, so he's got to be tired. We got, and she like gives she she clearly came there to see stone. She wants some of that stone bone. Yeah, and so she wait. Ma- she wants his juju bone. She wants his juju bone, and so she's making up a story about what she's been doing. Well, I'm I'm taking I'm looking after kids. She's like you got kids? Like no 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 no. I don't have kids. They're just orphans. I'm taking care of. I, I'm I've saw Foster's mom the other day. Yep. She's doing so, good. So, hey, you remember how I cheated on your son and it <laughs> broke his heart? But fuck you. And he's like, that's really interesting. He, he falls asleep on her. He's like, uh. yes. <laughs> well, she goes up to get him coffee because that's what a man who's been awake for four days yeah. needs. Like, I need coffee. More coffee. Coffee IV. Yeah, yeah and then she the refrigerator. Re- <laughs> yeah. I the refrigerator was, was something else I took inventory of when she when she uh, opens it up. 
I counted at least 10 unopened bags of rah-rah donuts in there. There were probably more hidden behind the bags. Uh, three slices of what used to be pizza just pulled up in the <laughs> bottom of the uh, of this nasty-ass fridge that looks like something exploded inside of it. And there's, like, a sideways, like, one-foot-tall mason jar of some mis- sort of mystery substance. Oh, Jesus. Maybe it's some kind of monster piss or something. I could, I would believe that uh, Stone is trying to ward off like vampires or something like that. He seems like that kind of uh, crazy. He finally passes out. He's been up for four days. Right. And he has, a, and that's where he has a flash. I don't really flesh out this flashback all that well because we see. We, yeah. We assume this is his partner. I think he even says, hey, Foster. Yeah. They did a good job at make. I don't know how they did it. Just the black and white like filter because he looks younger. Wasn't it like a sepia filter? Was that the is that the word for it? Because it's kind of like a tan I, and it was it. I thought yellowy. it was black and white. But yeah, he did he look younger. Looks, I don't know what they did. Yeah, he also looks fifty pounds lighter without all of the leather the stuff making him look right. fat. Yeah, right. that's a good point. Yeah, and they're like in the the sewers. Yeah, and then he like turns around and then Foster just disappears and then he wakes up. Right, and we're thinking, okay, we're going to slowly get more and more of this flashback, but they really, it's like two seconds long Maybe in the total. Japanese version has more flashback. Maybe it did. But yeah, he comes to, and there's a pigeon on his head. Is there? Yes. Yeah. And he can't, <laughs> he can't kill it, so he just lets it, he like brushes it off. Yeah. There's a scene, he brushes his hair with a wire brush. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Rucker is... You gotta get that pigeon shit out, dude. He's just like... <laughs> he is killing it here. Because <laughs> he finds like a little cracked mirror, <laughs> looks at his fucking hair, runs the wire brush that looks gnarly as fuck through yeah, that it. that would hurt really bad. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. And then and, he looks out the window, he's, and he sees Durkin, he's like his lap dog now, he's just waiting patiently. How many hours has Durkin been out there doing Tai Chi on the hood? I don't know. But, but it kind of warms his heart, like he's starting to warm up to Durkin Yes, now. he is. He's like, he like smiles to himself a little, it's like, that guy's not so bad at it. And, and now we have thing, to... That wasn't, that, that wasn't Griff doing a bit, he was actually doing Tai Chi on the hood of the Jeep for some <laughs> unknown reason. Yeah. Well, well, he's a very spiritual guy, as we learned. Yeah, Durkin's a lot of things. He's a he's a deep, deep river, you know? You gotta get to know him. He's running five miles every morning, banging his girlfriend every evening, and he's doing Tai Chi to keep his body and spirit in, uh, in alignment. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, because we learned that in the next scene, because Stone goes down, see him, he's sleeping now in his, in his Jeep. How much time has just passed from him looking out the window... <laughs> Then Stone goes over, and now Michelle's asleep. So we like runs. He does the waterfall from face off over her, where he just runs his fingers over her face. Then he like covers her with a jacket or a blanket. It's a filthy rag. It's you know. covered in pigeon shit. <laughs> and and, and then he goes and grabs a cup of last week's coffee from his nasty sink that has piles of dishes and a spare motorcycle engine in it. <laughs> He had to clean it out. It's the details, people. Details. details. And he, so he walks down. He sees our... Like you said, I don't know how much time went past. Really? But, Seriously? But he's sleep, uh, Dick sleeping in the Jeep. He's got his feet up. And then he's like, I'm warming up to this guy. I'm going to go prank A little him. rib. So he ties his shoelaces together. And then he flicks his dick. Wakes him up. And, he's, and he, then he collapses, falls in this filthy fucking water. Ruins his suit. And this is where it sounds like, hey, tell me about yourself. Yeah, they're not going to drive separately anymore. That's the important detail to point out is now suddenly he's hopping into the car. Hey, move over. I'll drive. Of course, he's got to drive. But, yeah, he's going to start asking him about himself. And, of course, because he, want, he, he, wants he wants the admiration of Stone so much. The first thing he starts out with, Fuck my girlfriend, Murray. Every fucking night. Stop trying twice on to Sunday. Bear. You hate Dick so much because <laughs> you're just jealous of him. He starts out by saying, "I run five miles every morning." Five miles? The fuck? Why would you run five miles every morning? Well, you gotta keep yourself in shape, and then I eat breakfast afterwards. Because he was worried. He he asked them, "Don't you eat breakfast?" Yeah, after I run five. 
Except for Sundays. Well, what do you do on Sundays? I hang around in my bed and fool around with my girlfriend. And that disgust. Yeah, he's just disgusted because like. He's like, you just bang chicks and leave. That's Stone's thing. He's like, you cuddling? What the fuck? And Wait, then, like, are you saying this girl is not even your best friend's wife? What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> yeah. Do you actually know her name? What the <laughs> fuck? So he's back to just being disgusted by him. He's like, but, but you can drive with me. Shotgun, you can't drive. I'm driving. They take off to... Uh, the local bar for some breakfast. That's where you go when you want some, some good breakfast. You go to a bar in the morning. I suppose. And while that's going on, we get a little monster POV. Well, we don't know. We don't know if the monster yet. We just we know if there's, a, there's something out there. Yeah, some serious Sargatha vision happening here. And he's I looking like the at the trunk of Dick's car. Yeah. And he takes a swipe at it and reveals, you know, a <laughs> yeah. big, what they call like an auto shotgun or something. Uh, what the fuck? But now we're like, oh shit! This I don't think this is a human now because he literally claws the fucking metal trunk open. Yeah, and so now we cut back. We're at the we're at the bar, and you know, we're gonna, we're gonna go over this. We're gonna figure this out. God. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty hilarious though because Dick, what is he gonna do? He's gonna try to order a croissant. What a croissant? <laughs> okay. Yeah, he he very heavily emphasizes the French uh, the Frenchness of the croissant. And it's yeah. it's just another one of those little subtle things that he throws in to make make his character annoying. <laughs> He's an Oxford man. I will and tell you, when you're overseas, you and oh you're waiting God, in line to get a croissant, and this you hear to Europe one time, so he has to tell us. This is the it. same thing in New Zealand as well. Oh, and, and then he had to drop that. In. <laughs> how many how many times a week do you fuck your girlfriend as well, girl? Murray, I got to tell you, free goddamn day. Okay. Tell oh, your croissant story. You've been waiting. You, <laughs> you are at an impasse because do you do the American thing and go croissant, even though you've been waiting in a line where everybody who speaks with very normal accents says croissant. So you're well, like, first of all, you're not wrong because only French people would say croissant. You're not anywhere near a French speaking land. No, so. I'm telling you, all of Europe did it, and all of New Zealand was doing it. Like I witnessed it. And so you're like, should I do it that way, or do I no. do it a dumb American way? I did it in a dumb American way. First of all, English people say fillet instead of filet. So you ain't doing nothing wrong, right? Mm. So, and Stone's having the gross English breakfast with, like, fucking baked beans and fucking shit. You know, like, what the fuck? And he's just slurping it up. He was slurping it, and that was gross. Like, he had a dangling piece of bacon that he slurped up. And, and he was shaving while he was at the bar, too. Yeah. <laughs> he pulls out a pocket shaver and just starts running it over his clean-shaven face. Yeah, he didn't uh, even need to shave. Yeah, yeah. Oh and, uh, and, and, and the bar guy, uh, when he walks up to give him his food and a, and a thing of salt, I, I still don't I've rewatched this scene like three times to see, try and figure out if like somebody says something to him that prompts this, but there's no reason, rhyme or reason to it. The bar guy just pours some salt in his hand and tosses it over his shoulder before he hands the, the salt to, to Rutger. He's the original salt bay. I... That's a good luck thing. Yeah, I was going to say, that's the good luck thing. You got you to gotta do that just, you know. To keep the ward off the bad spirits. There's a and it's a very weird bar because we get the, the guy you'd expect to be at the bar, and then there's like this goth. I don't know if it was a woman or a man. There was some goth person in the background. Yeah, we were in a full like rubber outfit. The, yeah, 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 like a yeah. kink outfit. Yeah, and Dick staring and, her down. In, uh, of course, still notices. He's like, "You like what you see?" It's like, I, I don't. <laughs> this friendship is very strange. Well, they've only known each other two days. This is true. So they're yeah, they're they're gonna go over the deets. They got we got to figure this shit out. What is going on? Where are the connections? Because I will give Dick one thing. He's about connecting the dots. He's Q full QAnon. He can just throw it all together. And he's like, well, we know shows up the night before the new moon when the tide rises. We all know the tide rises. And of course, the streets are flooded. So does that mean that the flooded streets actually go up too? Yes, I would think so. I would think so too. And he kills at midnight. Before. Or, or midnight. Or is it? He makes sure to kill before midnight? Well, see, this is the thing that threw me off, because he mentions in the first kill of the movie, it's 6.30. And 
And they're like, well, how do you know? Like, I know. Then we, we pointed out all these murders we've seen, none of them take place on a full moon at midnight. They're just taking place in random hours of the day. Right. But now we're putting it together. What? Yeah. Like this logic, unfortunately, it's not coming together because we just had a murder three nights ago. And I, I don't believe moon cycles work that way. No, it's once a month you get a full moon. Is it once a month? Yeah. It feels like it's uh, at least five times a week. Maybe global warming caused the moon phases. Holy to... shit. I can't imagine what the fucking like, monsters would be like if there was five full nights. Of... <laughs> Werewolves be everywhere. Werewolves? W- oh, my God. Chris would be flowing with cash in that point. He'd be, he'd be drowning that, in that his drop security, security right there. Yeah. Holy shit. You'd have to get a whole new compound. They would be hunting you down. So there is a pattern, but there's really no pattern. I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. I, I uh, no. <laughs> at, at, at this point, uh, Dick asks him if uh, if he's psychic because uh, he seems to have some sort of weird connection to the monster where he can hear his heartbeat, and uh, and he pulls out this black mask comic book that he keeps in his jacket for some reason. That's probably. Probably, like, sopping wet from where he fell into the puddle earlier and uh, and just shows it to Stone for some reason, and it never comes up again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just a reason to discuss Stone. It's like, you're a nerd, too? Like, what the <laughs> fuck? This, remember, this is 92. It wasn't cool. I mean, they're, they're just trying to build up these characters, trying to make them cool. They're, he's trying to connect with them in some way. Like, hey, I like comic books. Maybe you do, too. And he's like, fuck that. I like living like a crazy person in my weird house and eating raw. Ra- Wait, we've actually seen him consume real food. Right, yeah. Wow, he got his fiber. He got meat. He, he probably, got his... He's got to take a shit. Load. <laughs> I can't imagine. can't handle I that. I can't imagine what his shits would be like. <laughs> Vinny level. He's got no fiber in his body, so oh, uh, he's got he got. And so yeah, like like Chris pointed out, he's like, "Are you psychic?" He's like, I don't know. I just feel things. Like that's what psychic is. You fucking you moron. Idiot. Like all I do is I throw the books away. I do things my way, Stone's way or the hard way. And he's just like, you know what? I want you to throw your textbooks away. I want you to tell me your honest opinion of this case. And Dick doesn't know what to do with that. He's like, all I have is textbooks. All I know how to do is, like, right. quote from books. That's it. Right. That's me in a nutshell. Even my Black Mask comic book, I just quote from it. I don't know any – I'm not creative at all. And that's where, you know, we've been getting these little shots of what's going on at, uh, at Stone's place. And this right. is where we get to see the first bathroom. I, I have to imagine he has four bathrooms in this place. Yeah. In Stone's right. apartment. There. It, so Michelle wakes up, and before she goes into the shower scene, she walks over to the fridge and sees that at some point before he left, uh, Stone took a bunch of those chocolate bonbons that he pulled out of his jacket and fed to the dog earlier. And I'm guessing just yeah. licked the bottoms of them and stuck <laughs> them to the side of his nasty smeared fridge in the shape of a oh, heart. He made a heart just, shape out of it. Yeah, it's touching. Still, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do what Michelle does and just pluck one of them off this nasty stained fridge and eat it. Oh. <laughs> She's drunk on the stone bone, dude. I guess so. And I guess so. <laughs> so he's taking a shower, washing the filth of the pigeon shit off. Of her. <laughs> <laughs> I I gotta say, after I saw this, uh, I was like, man, this Kim Cattrall is great. She's probably in a lot of cool movies. And then I look up, and like the thing that she is known for, of course, is Sex in the City. No, big Trouble in Little China, dude. I that that was the first thing I saw was Sex in the City. I was like, really? This this awesome actress who's in all these fucking cool movies went on to be in Sex in the City. Make a living somehow. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, but she, she was Samantha, who was the cool one. Well, we're glad uh, we're glad at this moment she's a nobody actress because we get tits because she can't say no. So we get a nice tit shot of her, her showering, and we get a little psycho action where the we we're getting the monster POV where he's sneaking up on the shower, and we see from her vantage point we see a shape through the shower curtain. Yeah. We're like, oh shit. He's going to kill this bitch. Oh, yeah. That's what we're thinking. And then we go back to the bar, and we got to... This made no sense. 
No Nothing's sense. happened yet. Nothing. So we get a call to go back to Stone's place. Yes. Apparently, the dispatcher psychic. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Is it Anderson from fucking, uh, uh, oh boy, oh, Griff, your brain. Oh, it's yeah, gone. Not... Judge Dredd? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's in London. Well, even though Judge Dredd actually takes place in America. So, yeah, so they're like, go back to your place. Something's going to happen. Right. And they, they apparently they were just right right down the road, the local yes. tavern. Yes. They pull up, they hear a shriek. When they get there. Yes. So there's been no disturbance. There <laughs> no. is now a shriek. And he goes, There it is. Yep. The dispatcher was right. Yep. I wore five bucks. Maybe it's a minority port thing. And he recognizes that shriek. It's it's the shriek because he just was banging her last night, so he heard those shrieks <laughs> all night long. Dick knows that shriek too, because he yeah. was outside doing Tai Chi <laughs> hearing the shriek. <laughs> But it's before, the they, they, before the they run in, before they run inside, they pause for a moment and realize and look at the back of his jeep and realize, oh shit, we left the auto sh- shotgun unguarded, unlocked in the back of the jeep that has now been slashed open. Yes, they run up the steps and we get. I, I don't know if this was a scene, but we do get a scene where we had, you can see the toll of this coffee and chocolate is because he's like. <gasps> <laughs> How many fucking steps flights to this? I, you know what? I would have appreciated a detail where um, Stone is constantly having to pee because, as a person who diabetes. only consumes, <laughs> no, well, maybe I didn't. Is that a thing of diabetes? Yeah, you, you pee a lot when you get diabetes. Oh, okay. Anyways, uh, but as a person who only consumes water, coffee, and beer, those are three horrible diuretics that make you pee all the fucking time. I'm constantly off mic because I'm running over to pee. Even though our show only takes two hours to record, I pee nine times during a show. We never see Stone have to pee. And that's well, just he bullshit. Well, he himself. He's in the <laughs> oh water. Oh, my God. You know, he's damp constantly. <laughs> he's got the catheter. They run up to the room. He rips open the curtain. She, he just banged her last night, and she slaps me. How dare you? Well, she, he scared her. It was, mo- it was more being startled. I think it was because he was... Okay. And he's like, why the fuck did you scream? Well, the water went cold for five seconds. She's been showering for how long at this point, everybody? Hour. 45 minutes? Well, she's got, yeah, she's got some most... Got an abundance of water, so I guess... <laughs> <laughs> and then they hear another shriek, and he's like, that's the chick I banged downstairs? <laughs> that's what he tells <laughs> Dick. That's the other girl I've been banging. <laughs> Ugh. All right, there, there, are, there are a few details before we, we move on to the next part that I'd like to point out. First off, okay. uh, behind, uh, uh, behind Michelle in the shower, hanging on the wall is a Harley Davidson sign, That's... a big one that just takes up half the wall space for some reason. <laughs> uh, when he gets in there, the motorcycle and TV have both been turned on. Uh, so oh, clearly right. the monster yeah, knows yeah. how to operate those. And more okay. of the chocolates that were on the fridge are missing. So either Kim went back and ate some more or the monster snacked on some. Oh, this is interesting. It rushes down to the, the neighbors. It's, I'm sorry. It's just fascinating how they get so many little details so right and so many details about like how the monster kills <laughs> yeah, so very they, wrong they so, they're like us they got wrapped up in the minute details you're like yeah we'll figure that out at the end the monster yeah <laughs> yeah so you run down they they knock and say please and then they kick they go they kick well, the door. stone learned his lesson from scaring michelle because that spooked her so he's like i'm gonna I be forget, a little is more is it stone or is it they one of them flips out and just starts f- shoots the door down yeah dick charges in He's got, he's got bloodlust now. I, he's been hanging out. He had, he sniffed a little bit of that fucking must coming off dick and or uh, off stone, and suddenly he's turning into a new man. So fucking dick rushes in there, and uh, I, I didn't even notice this happened so fast. He gets fucking like blown out the <laughs> window. When how do he get blown out the window? Because the he, fucking monster has that fucking shotgun. Yeah, he gets hit at point blank range by this giant auto shotgun, gets blown clean through a third story window, and I guess just lands on his feet. Well, it's water. Yeah. yeah. Water <laughs> it's probably it's probably yeah, high tide. Remember, the, the monster's in the room. There's a shootout between the monster and Oh my 
And God, between the monsters. <laughs> yeah. So are they still trying to trick us to make us think that it's human? I think when, no, because I think when he like ripped the fucking trunk open of the car, we're like, okay, we're not dealing with yeah, it. Yeah, right. And we saw the incisor, you know, the fucking teeth, yeah. tooth mold, teeth mold, tooth, tooth mold. Yeah, it's teeth mold. Yeah. Okay. So everything is leaning towards some crazy monster, but now we got a fucking shootout. <laughs> it, oh, this is so, this is so bizarre. But yeah. The we're monster, jump the monster bails. We're jumping around. We're shooting at each other. They're hitting each other. Or I, I don't think Stone gets hit, but he shoots the monster because there's blood everywhere. Well, there's blood everywhere because there's a new victim. Right. Well, there's that too. But he does shoot the monster. He tells his captain he shot the monster. Is he lying? Okay. So he, he go rushes into the bathroom. Jeez, there's a new victim. Body, heart missing. You oh. know what that means. And then Michelle comes running down, and, okay, she's been showering for 45 minutes. She wanted to continue to shower. Despite hearing gunshots and everything, she was still just like, I'm, I'm staying. I'm fucking <laughs> finishing my shower. Right. Getting my hour and a half in. That's how you get such radiant skin like she had. You shower for an hour and 45 minutes a day. All in one consecutive shower. So she comes down, and she's just got the towel wrapped around. And she's like, that motherfucker bit me. Apparently, the monster ran back upstairs, bit her, and then took off. Maybe I don't. It took wow, the fire a... escape. Oh, uh, another important uh, minor note: it left the shotgun on the toilet, so it no longer has a gun anymore. Oh, okay, that is a good detail. The I... Stone has another hype. Uh, he starts hyperventilating. Has another anxiety attack. He runs down to the street, looking around. Where are you? Finally, the cops have shown up. Yeah, and this is where he fucking. He, he stares down, and he sees this little girl on a stoop, and he runs <laughs> up, and he's like, you saw him, didn't you? What the fuck? Again, you guys yeah. have been talking about this. <laughs> what are they building? What Nothing. are they building up to? Absolutely fuck all. Because she just stares at him blankly. Yeah, no yeah. tells it. She, 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 very much like the dog, she's just like, hmm? He should have given her one of the chocolates. Maybe she would have. I think the dog and the girl are working with the monster. How about that? You th- <laughs> wow. Yeah, maybe so, she was the one who delivered the package to the police department in broad daylight for it. Oh, my God. I I think you guys are on to something here. So the so cops grab him because he's freaking out now. They put, like, a, a mask on him so he can get some oxygen. Yeah. And he's still not calming down, so they hit him with some kind of injection in his yeah. neck. Uh, well, Red Bull injection. It, you think, and that triggers it. another flashback. Back in the sewer. Not much of a flashback because we see this back to the, actually the same scene, except we see Foster get sucked down into the fucking water. Yeah, and that's a little back to foreshadow, so we'll have to keep that one in our memory banks. But yeah, he just drops into the water. Like, we're in a sewer. It's like ankle deep. And then Stone turns his back, and then we see the monster kind of emerge behind him. It does absolutely nothing. Yeah. You just let him go. Yeah, just let him go. I, I'm, I don't know. Well, actually, Stone there comes is back. something oh. that is, is hinted at but not directly shown. Uh, when Stone wakes up from this flashback, uh, you can see his arm, and it has a huge scar going yeah. it from uh, presumably where the monster had slashed him uh, in that flashback. Okay. And that, that has significance later on. Right. But he goes back to the office. Dick's there. Like, yeah, I beat you too. He's like, I just saw you fucking get shot out of a third story window. First, okay, I always, I always wear it. Thanks, John. And he and he he buys. He's like, okay, yeah. And then I, I accept punches that. Punches him in the face. <laughs> yeah. Because now he's getting feelings for Dick. He's like, I was worried about you. You didn't fucking. You didn't. What the fuck. So they're just rushing through the office, Paulson. He's like, oh, yeah, by the way, that, that gun that you had me run on the uh, lab tech on, yeah. It's got traces. It's, first of all, it's got Foster's DNA and fugitive fingerprints all over it. Yeah. But it's got traces of the DNA of every victim of this killer. And, oh, by the way, also, a little bit of that rat disease that's going around that we're not touching on at all in this movie. Yes. A little bit of that, too. Stone doesn't know how to handle this news, so him and Paulson start getting in a scrap again, because that's just what they do. And the chief has to come through and break it up, as the chief has to do. It's just, it's just their lot in life. And chief pulls him into the office, and he's like, 
the fuck's happening? You got him getting shot out of a window. You've got, you know, this gnarly scar and everything. He's like, did you... What's going on? Like, what? Please tell me you shot. At, You're an expert marksman. At least 400 times. 450 Magnum. And it's still, and it's got away. I don't know what to tell you, Chief. So, yeah, so now uh, uh, Stick goes, oh, by the way, uh, the heart was still in that victim's body. Stone goes, he's got to be here then. Go down the morgue. All right, so now we're getting more logic to this monster. What's our new connection here? He can't, if he catches a victim, he has to return to it? He has to have the heart. He has to eat the heart. And we learn in the, near the end of the movie why he has to do that. But he has to eat the heart. Man. But he didn't have time because Stone had run in on him. So they go, it's got, it was, we got to go right down to the, uh, the morgue. So they, they run down there. <laughs> They're assuming, of course, that he's going to be in the morgue. So we got to get the heart. Stone turns to Dick and tells him, are you ready to die? I'm. And now they're starting to bro up. He's like, fuck yeah, I am. Let's do this. He's just been shot through a fucking window. He's like, I, I'm immortal now. And yeah, let's do this. Yeah, his we get suit a very, like, even damaged from it either. He's wearing an identical suit that, to what he had before he got blown through the window. Yep. And we're about to find out uh, about his Oxford tie situation, too. Because it's still intact as well. You think that would have got blown to shreds. We go down to a very futuristic morgue where they're like levitating trays and they're wrapped in plastic. Yeah, they had the plastic just kind of around their table. And then, I don't know, they had IVs attached to these dead bodies. I guess it was to keep them from like going. The only rationale I can say is because there was like blood and like urine in them. Like, so like, <laughs> oh, maybe it was the, like they were um, taking. That one I actually do have an answer to is supposed to be formaldehyde uh, being IV'd okay. into the bodies to preserve them. Chris knows all about preserving, uh, right. you know, he's monster seen, bodies. Dead and bodies, everything. Chris is saying millions. Well, yeah, he's on the hunt for dangerous monsters. Right. He con- probably comes across why them all the time. expertise. Yeah, yeah. You don't always so find the we, whole thing. Sometimes you just find like a hand or a foot that, for whatever reason, got lopped off or left behind. And, uh, and yeah, you just stick it in a formaldehyde bottle and it's good. God, I, I can't imagine trying to hunt down a fuck one of these venom monsters though, because the DNA situation—it's like you're doing tracebacks on it. Sh- everything's coming up. Well, guys, Stone was right because he is feeling that heartbeat. Boom, pump, boom, pump, boom. He's like, he's here. He's in this fucking room. Yeah, and he's like, what? Are, what are you talking about? What heartbeat? He says, stop for a minute and listen. You hear that heartbeat? That's not you. That's it. Was it? Was that here, or was that later on when they, when when Dick finally starts to feel the heartbeat too? I think. I don't know. I, I think thought... that that particular line is later on when they're going down. Into okay. The so we get a little goofy jump scare where they rush in on a guy who's just working there. He's got his Sony Discman on. He's listening to fucking uh, Stained, like you said. Yeah. Huge hit back then. In a while. And they nerd out because he noticed they have the same ties, Oxford ties or whatever. Yeah. You know, and like a stone's disgust. It's like, fuck. We got a fucking monster. They turn around to go back through the morgue and right in front of stone, written in blood, for you. What was for him? I didn't I notice know. anything. Was, I don't know either. Was it? I think it was a half-eaten heart. That's like only guy can, oh, can guess. Maybe. I don't remember either. Do you remember, Chris? <laughs> Uh, I seem to recall that the rest of the body was in there, and maybe he left the the heart there. I, I my memory's a bit foggy on what what was supposed to be for him, and then and, and then the drop ceiling tiles start happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. This this is a very big irritant. If you've ever listened to the show, I hate. A, we learned in run, run hide fight, run hide fight, a fucking hundred and ten pound girl. Can't walk on a fucking drop ceiling. We got like a 200, 250 pound monster. 10 feet tall. 10 feet tall. That's just, it's, I will give them credit. Their mood is shifting a little at least. Yes. It's not like, but still. And you don't want to look up when the, when that fucking drop ceiling dust is falling down. You get that shit in your eyeball, you're basically blind for a year. And there's no telling monster what type of down. crap is settled in the those drop ceiling tiles oh. in the fucking morgue. <laughs> Oh, my God. I was working in a restaurant, and they wanted to open up while we were working on a drop ceiling. 
And we were like, you don't, you don't want that at all. These little particulates coming down. Thank you. Yeah, been Not there, done that down. as well. That stuff, that Ugh. stuff gets stuck in your hair forever. Yes. Monster leaps down. They just unload on them. Yeah, they're fucking hitting this guy left and right. Just shooting dead bodies. They don't fucking. Monster rips through a metal door. Takes the fuck off. At this time, Dick finally gets it. He's got bloodlust. Mm-hmm. That his juju bone is getting pretty hard. Yes, it is. And he's like, "Fucking a." I see stone. I see through your eye. We gotta kill. We gotta maim. We don't just need guns. We need big fucking guns. He's like, he's a broken record at this point. All I can do is go, big fucking guns. Big fucking guns. Let's go get some big fucking... Stone is like, <laughs> yes! Just like grabs him by the hand and they run down to the to the coffee machine because they need a, they need to calm their nerves. Uh, maybe up they, the they nerves. Up their nerves. He's like... <laughs> Stone is finally vibing with him. He's like, you're getting it. He's on his wavelength. Coffee, chocolate, leather, guns. This scene. That's the four basic food group. For all the flaws, this scene is so fucking good. Stone baby bird some chocolate in the fucking <laughs> <drink's> <laughs> mouth. Hammer and fucking coffee. <laughs> they are throwing up. They're like, go to the armory. Go to the fucking armory where Wilford Bramley's running it, apparently. And he's just like, Stone even, now that they're on the same wavelength, Stone's like, got to test them. I can see you totally do it. You're right. You are this guy. That's why your thumb's up on him so hard. But uh, he's like, do you really get laid every night? And Dick turns to him wide fucking eyed from all the caffeine rush. He got a hit of a cigarette, too, and everything. He's just all bing bonging all over the place. Oh, yeah. Big time. And then Stone finally believes him. And he's like, here, suck on this. And Hans gives him one of his one of the captain's cigars. Not any one of his yeah, cigars. Yeah, like, <laughs> puts it in his mouth and he takes a big old drag. Of, oh, man. So good. So they got to get their fucking big, giant fucking hand cannons. Go to the armory. Wilford Brimley's waiting. He's like, yep. This is highly, highly. What did you do? Did you get any clearance for this? They're like, fuck you. Give me shit that can blow up buildings. Yeah, they're full hummingbirds at this point. There's no way Wilford Brimley could... I mean, he's got diabetes. He can't get that kind of sugar content going in his system. So he's like, guys, I want to show you this big old double assault shotgun rifle. It's got like... It's just a crazy... This is where Wilford finally gets to shine and show off his knowledge. Like, well, what's this? And like, well, that's it. How many fucking people can it kill? That's all I care about. Yeah. And they're like, they, and like, you can't take that's a fucking grenade. You can't take that. Oh, fuck yeah, we can. And they just load up. They're just strapping shit on them. It's like fucking the scene from Commando or Commandos getting all his gear up. And they just walk out. And then the, the chief comes down. He's like, guys, this is highly on. What, what are you doing? You can't, mm-hmm. you can't do this. And Stone goes, I got to leave. Go, young man. Go. And they just let him go. I love it because the captain is trying again. They're on. They're in their own fucking world at this point. They're high on fucking sugar and coffee. They're or high caffeine. As- and so they're trying. They're finally like breaking down everything going on. And the captain, excuse me, gentlemen, we need to talk. We need to talk. What's going on? Why do you have these guns? And we we get the twenty five seventy eight. I've been so fucking stupid. The sugar is finally like get, making things make it sense. It unlocks your brain. Yeah, right. Twenty fifth year, seventy eighth cycle. The Chinese calendar. We were being so racist. We were thinking about the fucking white people calendar. <laughs> it's the Chinese calendar. And what is two thousand eight? And then fucking Stone rubs his chin. You're the rat. Fuck yeah, it is. Yeah. And I want to point out, I still don't get the rat connection to this monster at all. There's some, but there is. Yeah. So, so we learn that yeah, it's it's the year of the rat. The fucking uh, Scorpio is the most loyal sign to Satan. Like he's just rattling shit off. He's full sugar high. Inverted triangle somehow means water. <laughs> it's a water sign. Yeah, Scorpio's a water sign. But I don't. What I don't get is. How do you have to look at it to see it's inverted? Because an inverted triangle is a normal triangle, depending on how you look at it, right? I don't, don't fucking get it. They don't either. They're just high as fuck. Is you buying this logic? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, 
depending upon what uh, what you're drawing inside of the triangle, it determines which way the triangle is facing. Like if you say write the letter A inside of a inside of an upside down triangle, that triangle is now determined to be inverted. So there, there's yeah, a little bit of logic there. Okay. Okay, I can see it. Because they did write the numbers in there. Yeah. And then they did have the Scorpio, which is like the M thing with like a devil swoosh, ta- tail swoosh. It, yeah, it is that's really all I know is... Zodiac symbol for Scorpio. And, and, and meanwhile, okay. while they're having this, uh, this back and forth while the chief is, is just yelling at them, the same handful of, of cop extras are just running back and forth down the hall behind them. <laughs> Was this hall flooded with water, or was I imagining no, that? Was, no, you were imagining it. Okay. But, so for what we know is what they've queuing on now is London, 2008, Year of the Rat, big shit's going down, and then Dick throws out, how about this? I'm, I'm on a roll now. Maybe the monster's eating the hearts. Not only gain power, not only gain DNA, but to gain people's souls. Oof. It's, the, it's the, what is, what is the shit that they say that Democrats... Take out of a, a baby's adrenochrome. Adrenochromes. He's getting the adrenochromes mm-hmm. out of the hearts. Mm-hmm. Stone goes brilliant. It has to be that. This, this is coming together. So this is okay. I'm again. I'm loving this connection now. Now that they're on the same wavelength, Stone's like, I'm gonna finally let you in to my <laughs> apartment. Wow, and- what an honor. I think this is where the deleted scenes come in uh, that you can only find in the Japanese Japanese cut. And the main the main shtick with this this particular scene and, and why it's such a crime that it got cut out is before they go to uh, to Stone's apartment, they first go to uh, to Durkin's apartment, his high rise apartment, and uh, to which uh, uh, which. Uh, 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 Stone go uh, asked him, "You live here? Yep. You rich or something? Yep. So you're smart. You're rich. You get laid every night. What's your problem?" And, and apparently, uh, apparently, Dick's decided that he's going to have to take his uh, his girlfriend out and and uh, and have her stay with her parents um, overseas so that uh, the monster doesn't come for her. And you get to you get to actually meet his girlfriend. Uh, who is uh, basically a model who's talking to somebody, to her friend on the phone about the, the mind-blowing sex they have every night and how uh, he hasn't come home for a few days, so she's thinking he might be cheating on her or something. And so uh, Dick and, and Stone just walk in and introduce uh, in, in, introduce Stone to him, and uh, Dick just picks up his girlfriend, hefts her over his shoulder, Walks upstairs and then bangs her until nightfall, apparently, because <laughs> uh, uh, Stone just waits out in his jeep, and by the time it cuts back, it's nighttime again. Uh, um, I, I mean, yeah, Stone waits in his jeep. Dick walks back down, says that he's taken care of everything, and then there's another killing in an alleyway nearby that is honestly, honestly, it's not great. Like. You, you don't really even see anything happen. They just find a body in an alleyway and make a phone call, and that's about it. And those are okay. the deleted scenes that are in the Japanese cut. I mean, I like... I see why they cut it out, because Dick is such a useless character. Who cares about his backstory? <laughs> I, I like I, how much I of like... a joke he becomes throughout it, because he's just, he's just yeah. a third character who's just a dork. All right, so we're at home, and he's going full dork mode because he's in his hero's fucking home. He's sitting on the Harley. He's revving it up vroom, and everything. Vroom. He's Yeah, he's doing the puttering noises. And with they're like, they're riffing, Griff. So they're like, we need more coffee. We, we're on to something here. Yeah. You want coffee? Don't, don't you want? He's like, fuck yeah, I want coffee. Give me that fucking coffee right now. And so he's, how do you take your coffee? Milk. Goes in, Dick, uh, Stone's going in to grab the milk. Fucking... Heart in his fridge. And we're not talking a heart made of chocolates. We're talking about a human heart. And of course, we're thinking, Michelle? He get Michelle? And so, uh, does, uh, he gets Harley like, I gotta take a dump or well, something. They run to the. What happens is, they, they uh, I guess Dick was so excited. And they were vibing so well. They didn't notice that his apartment's flooding now, apparently. Because yeah. Michelle. 
uh, but before they before they do the uh, the thing where they go check on Michelle, uh, Stone picks up the heart out of the fridge on a and just tosses it out the window. <laughs> it's like fucking evidence, and they're just like, "Fuck this." <laughs> we have enough evidence. We don't need more. Oh, that's yeah. So and then they, good. They, they they see this water coming out of the, the, the second bathroom. Yep. And so they rush to it, and we see. Uh, Michelle, fully clothed, in the bathtub, scrubbing furiously with soap her hands. This is where she's in, like, a metal tub now. So this yeah. is a second bathroom. And I don't think the Harley-Davidson giant tin thing on, on the walls there anymore, I, I either. I think it was. Oh, but, yeah, it, and she, it still was. Okay, so it was the same bathroom. And then she throws out this line that that Foster's mother committed suicide. Yes. And we, there's not. It's just thrown out there. We, we did the monster cause that? Like she committed suicide, so she didn't get killed. Why do we need to know this? Why is this happening? Right. I I don't know. Michelle's motivations are very <laughs> sad. Well, she is feeling the heartbeat too because she got bit. So right. she's freaking out. She's like you said, she's so she, when she freaks out, she's got to wash her hands. And then uh, our boy, uh, they 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 go out into the hallway for a minute. And we, we get a little, like, uh, tension breaker. Because she, Michelle calls over, Harley, am I going to be okay? And Dick's just like, name's Harley. I'm working with Harley. And they have a little uneasy laugh together. Yeah, What's like, so what kind of name great is about Dick, Dick Durkin? <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I want to say that it looks, I genuinely think that, uh, that uh, Dick, the guy who played Dick Durkin, I, I, I think that, that laugh that he does is genuine. I could believe that. <laughs> so he's yeah, like, it, Dick, that was a good I... moment. Yeah, it felt very real. But again, when you're working with Rucker, who's just going off the cuff all the time, that, I mean, Wings and uh, John D. Hart. <laughs> this was a Wings level performance it, from Rucker. It was. Hour. So Rucker's like, or Harley, I should say, is like, why don't you wait by the car? Let me, I'm going to fuck my girl now. You made me wait. <laughs> Holy shit, if they would have left, <laughs> like, Again, this plays up to Stone and how fucking petty he is. We've already had to wait with Dick outside while he fucks Michelle once. Then, if we had the deleted scenes, Dick gets his yeah, fuck scene. Right. And then Stone's like, no, I get another yeah. fuck scene? Right. That yeah. would have been the Seagal cut. Like, no, I get an additional fuck scene. So he, he calms her down, pulls out a sponge, wipes her hands. with. He's wearing his sleeveless gloves. <laughs> And he calms her down. Sleeveless gloves with the watch <laughs> stitched into it, by the way. And he bangs her while Dick has to wait in the car. <laughs> uh, so Dick, uh, he, he, he finally, like, he's down there to keep an ear and eyes open, you know, because they're, yeah. they're on the hunt for a venom monster who's apparently has to get them because he has touched them. He's got, like, their, Michelle is hunted. got to have their soul. Yeah, Michelle is the chased one now, and so, of course, what they're going to do is leave her all alone in a second here. But he find, Dick radios in, hey, sensing something. I got, I'm, I'm going to go check it out. And he just takes off on foot. Yeah. And then Stone, he's like zipping his pants up. All right, let's, let's go kill some monsters. Dirt, Dick, Dick, where are you? Like he says, he's the Jeep is, is gone. So before he parts Michelle, he's like, you're... This monster is coming for you. He wants to murder you. He's tied to you with a bite. Yup. We have shot him multiple times. But I'm just going to give you this gun and leave you alone now. Right. Stone sets out on foot. He passes by some heavy metal hobos. And he's like, hey, have you seen a nerd? He ain't seen shit. And then he, see, he spots the nerd glasses on... The, considering the, the, the how least, much water. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, this was like the one street that's not submerged. For oh, some okay. Reason, so he can find those glass. And then he comes. To be, then he finds the, the he finds Dick's Jeep. And he, I guess, he hears like some muffled noises or something. I, he just opens the trunk and Dick's in there tied. What tied up with Why his didn't own the monster just... tie? Oh, that's right. That was a good. That's a good little detail. Why didn't the monster just kill him? Oh no. Right. Why? Why is this mon? God, this is terrifying. I, I'm. I'm. Because we're learning that there's no rhyme or reason to it. Because even though we, they're trying to make it like there's a reason, like midnight, he always kills at midnight and at, at the full moon. No, he's killing whenever he feels. 
Right. Yeah, no, he's going out. He's fucking teasing people. He's doing everything. He's got his cool shades. He's probably got a duster on. He probably goes to all the raves and everything. 2008, it probably was a good rave year. Especially in London. Yeah. So they're like, Michelle, we got to go back. They rush back. Michelle is like fucking in a gunfight with fucking the monster at this time. Yeah, and she stands up to it. She's just like, you fucking creep. What? Oh, she calls him a rat man or something. Rat fuck. Shoot rat something. fuck, bro, yeah. And they arrive, and then Michelle's gone. Where is she? It just opens fire in the kitchen. Just unloads like a machine gun into the fuck, you know. Yeah, Stone's kitchen. Stone, Stone went to check one of his nine bathrooms, and Dick's <laughs> left to his own devices in the kitchen, where he starts unloading that auto assault shotgun. And Dick, com- or you know, Stone comes running in. What the fuck is he in here? You know, I only have one kitchen. Yeah, I only have nine bathrooms. He was one finally kitchen. disturbed about his house, <laughs> which is a disarray. He's like, "You fucked up my kitchen. I'm already fucked up." And he's like, "But I got a rat." I think. And he finds, like, the shrap, you know, just, like, the shreds of a rat. He's like, no, you got it, bud. And then they're like, oh, what's going on with your chest, Dick? He's like, still hopped up on caffeine, so he doesn't even feel it. And we see that his shirt is just shredded all fucked up. (laughs) What the fuck is this realization? Chris, uh, why don't you help us out with this reveal here? Yeah, they, uh, he just sort of realizes that his chest is bleeding, looks at his hand, and then faints. Uh, and then when he comes to, uh, he's on, he's laid out on the floor, his shirt splayed open, and Stone is, is looking at the apparent pentagram map that has been <laughs> carved into his chest. And rather than just yep. take him to a hospital or, or, like, a medic or patch him up or anything, he just... He lays a map out, uh, like a city map out on his crotch, hands, uh, hands Dick uh, a mirror to hold up so that he can see, uh, see his own chest, and then has yeah. him decipher uh, what was carved in it. And it turns out it was, um, it was a map following the lines of the, uh, the Scorpio symbol, I think. Uh, and it yep. was leading yeah. him to, um, to a particular location where, uh, where it evidently is taken Michelle, or so they think. Right. Uh, reading left to right of the M, like they do, they, they do like the pointed kind of little devil tail detail, and it's pointing directly where they need to go. Right. Cannon Street. It's directly where we need to go, because it's Cannon Street. Little Golden Globus reference there. And not only that, Griff, that is where Foster was la- was killed. So it's it's all come full circle. It all makes sense. They're like, let's fucking do this shit. Let's go to Cannon Street. And we're opening up, and they're just in a sewer. They're just already, like, going down. And we get a new character, a Blade Runner character as well, straight out of there. Blade Runner. Yeah, he, I'm pretty sure he was no, the guy. Wasn't in- that wasn't him? No. I fucked this up? He was the guy, he was in uh, Tango and Cash. He's the guy that gave them their, their uh, Bigfoot car at the end. Oh, okay. He always, but he, I can see where you get confused. He always plays weird, nerdy guys. And he has that, that voice. That's what yeah. I thought. Okay. And, and so, uh, yeah, he's just like, hey, guys. Like, that's his voice. Like, yeah. I'm the rant catcher. Like, apparently, you got to get his permission to fucking go into the tunnel. Uh, again, we're going into, well, he was the uh, sewer keeper. I don't know what was going on. He had a young boy working with him. I didn't like that. I don't it wasn't on. a young boy, it was a man. That it, there was an interesting dynamic happening there. Oh, again, small details, fascinating. Large details, not so much, because he's the rat catcher. And they've been trying to build up this rat terror. Not really trying, but yeah. Yeah, they really but haven't at, tried to tried to build up the background thing of the of the rat plague. It's just like they could have done a lot more world building with that than they did. Yeah. There's nothing rat about the monster at all. Right, so it makes I, it even like dumber that because he does have some kind of rat disease in his DNA or whatever. I don't fuck. Yeah, that. that's it. This is where the movie kind of falls apart for me right here at the end. Or it's just kind of like let's just get this over. There's not with. enough it, for Rucker to work with at this it, point. It's also where I think the second director came in, or, or it's either the second director or second writer or something. Uh, basically, there was a bit of a change in the production because the original guy. Um, either walked off or something happened to him. Uh, I don't quite remember which. 
Uh, so that that's why the this section of the film feels like a completely different movie. Uh, oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. So Dick's a badass, but he's still scared of rats. Yes. So Rat Catcher gets a little like eh, he's scared of rats. He gets laid every night. Yeah. That, again, Stone sticking up for him. Yeah, this guy gets laid every night. But Ratcatcher doesn't believe him, so I like that about the and, and, Rat I Catcher. Love how that's how that's a running joke throughout the film, just making fun of the fact that he claims he gets laid every night. Yes. There's so like the logic didn't work out so well, but there's so many great details that Dick and Stone bring together that make this just such a fun watch. So Anyways. Ratcatcher gives him the key to the city, those those giant ass like castle keys. Oh and, yeah, and he's like, "All right, this is I stop here. I'm not going any further, guys." Yeah, you guys don't want to be on Cannon Street. I definitely don't want to be at Cannon Street. Me and my boy toy over here, we're gonna go back and <laughs> fiddle some rat pelts or something. So they're in the catacomb, and uh, holy shit, there's a rah rah fucking like dispenser right here. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and he's like, "Hey." You want a rah rah? I gotta get my rah rah. And he fucking uh, fonzes it. He punches it, but it's like rotted away. So the fucking uh, tin, like front of it, falls out, and it's just full of rats. And they're spring loaded rats, so they jump at him. <laughs> and so, of course, Dick's freaking out. But yeah. <sighs> And then they just like continue through through yeah. the uh, abandoned subway tunnels. I think there's like a gag where also uh, Dick falls through the water like there he, is he gets wet yeah. they're playing on the flashback yeah because they're down that little corridor now and he falls into the water so you're thinking oh my god you know maybe a zargatha got him or something but, and no it's just a it's just a rib or something because he pops now, right back up i he's established that he can hear the heartbeat i don't think he hears a heartbeat anymore he just senses the man now on. and he's like it's got to be coming through here and they open a the door, and it's Ratcatcher and his boy toy are fucking dead. They're they're standing yes. up. I this I think I'm right about this, right, Chris? Uh, this is where he, uh, yeah, Dick starts finally. Where, yeah, I think this is where Dick points out that uh, you, you stop stressing out about it. It's not your heartbeat you're hearing; it's his. And the door that they opened up that the Ratcatcher and the other guy were in uh, is actually the door to a lift. Because it looked like they were about to like go, like try to go up or down a level or something, and then they open up the door and they're there. So I guess they stepped onto an elevator or something and got killed. It's it's weird. Yeah, I didn't understand how that how this door was there. <laughs> like they walk in the opposite direction, they go downstairs. I guess a lift makes some sense, but just fall out of there dead. Or Somehow no. this freaks Dick out after all the shit he's seen. He's seen hearts being ripped out of bodies. He freaks out, so of course Stone does does what you do. You need to calm someone down. It's rubbing his earlobes. Yeah, this is a, this is a uh, this is a got to be a rucker. It had to be. Oh, actually, like, yeah, I think fuck. that might be a callback to an earlier thing that I think we may have forgotten to touch on. Where the first time oh. they're in the car together, Dick uh, Dick tries to give uh, Stone a, a yes. shoulder rub or something and gets a gun up the nose for it. And he tells him, "Don't you touch me." Yeah, yeah, we definitely forgot that. He he tried to blue them, get in there and rub his shoulders. So he's rubbing those earlobes and it calms him down like a dog. You rub the ear. And, like, this is where they find out the heartbeat, you know, is the monster's heartbeat. They put it all together. Yeah. Because, because uh, Stone has that fucking claw mark on his chest. That's why he's connected to the monster. And that's how the monster has his DNA. Yeah. So after this soothing earlobe rub and everything, everything hot oil calm, massage, hot oil yeah, massage, they laid it all out right there. They just took a minute. Once you calm your senses, you start to hear things you didn't hear before. He's got a cucumber on his eyes. He's got the cucumbers on yeah. his eyes. He's got a nice wet towel on his head. You know, they're exfoliating. They're doing it all. They hear Michelle scream out, and it's it's a good thing because we had no direction for this end scene until yeah, Michelle it, screamed it, out. It, well, there's no direction to this. Thing because it makes no sense nope she's hanging above the of the, the water from her hands we're getting we this is getting into some real hellboy shit right here she's in like a beam of light yes apparently they they figure out they can't go into that light they you know it probably would have been better and maybe you guys agree with me here if they would have showed him reach in and something happens yeah instead of just 
You can't touch that. It's an <laughs> incantation, and if you break the circle, it'll fucking kill her. It's like a little kid. It's by force field. You can't go through it. It's the ground lava? Like, ah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, they I, figure I, that that's out. That's one somehow. of the bits that I always thought was a little done kind of weird as well. Like that, that, that could have been done a bit more clear, I guess. Yeah. I mean, if you're... Tell us there's magic happening here. You need to show... I mean, we know there's a monster, and he can shoot a gun, and he can probably drive a car and all this, but... Uh, you need a little more than just a beam. Yeah. You know, like some CGI sparkles or some hey, shit, you know? This movie's about apparently about rats and rat catchers. <laughs> Have a rat jump into it and, like, get fried. Something to show <laughs> us this actually has power here. Anyways. But they figure it out. They're like, well, why don't you just swing over to us? Yeah. Just and lo and behold, that's what she does. But while she's doing that, we get Jaws vision. Yeah. see under the water. The this monster's is good. right below it. This is good. We I see, like We see, like, Stone's legs under the water. We're like, oh, shit. He's going to grab Stone. Yeah. And they get, she swings off. They get her, like, uh, Dick's, like, on the top of a subway train. So he yep. grabs her. And then the monster just leaps out. We got the camera right above it, looking down at it, and shooting straight up to the camera. And Yeah. And no, part- the weird what? thing about it is you can see the water splash underneath them in reverse. Like, it oh. was like a reverse shot that they did and thought that they could kind of get away with because of how quick it was and because the focus would be on the monster. But yeah, I know every every time I've seen it, I can't help but notice that the water that he's coming out of is is just splashing inwards in reverse. <laughs> what I do like though, I mean, we just a part of our exclusive deal, going to see Dan Six's new movie and everything. We got to see some new trailers and we got to see that Venom 2 trailer and I think we both agreed this monster looked cooler as a Venom monster than... Yeah, it looked... I think what Venom was lacking was Ray-Bans. It's the Ray-Bans, right? Yeah. And we're not even fucking around. You could see the little Ray-Bans logo in the corner. So maybe right. he ate a man wearing Ray-Bans and he got Ray-Ban DNA or something, right? Is that how that works? Yeah, let's go with it. Okay. Yeah, that's so what they just opened... Yeah. Right. <laughs> they just opened fire. This is the end, guys. So it's just... Not stop shootout. It's a mess. They're shooting guns everywhere. There's a moment where Stone goes into the, the train car. Well, what first happens is Michelle and Dick are still on the top. So the oh, monster goes into the train car. That's and it, yeah. And they're trying to do like a Jaws thing where it's a dorsal fin, but yep. it's just the hand. First, it's like the fingers climbing through. And then it's just a hand going through. It's oh, like the wrist is like cutting the effects. Yeah. Yeah. So they're running down, and they got the fin running behind them, or the hand, or the yeah. wrist, whatever. Yeah. And it's gating on them, but, you know, they get away just in time. And so Stone go- goes into the subway car. Yep, and he's got a hundred... Okay, here's the logic of subway cars is, you know, they're narrow aisled. You just walk straight. The monster was just going straight. So what... Why... How did we end up with the jump scare here? Because I don't understand... Did the monster double back? Did it go out and come no, back in? No, he just didn't go into the next car. He stops, and then he turns around... To look at the camera. Yeah, and then we get the shot. Nice shot. Of the, the, the monster hand... Head palming. Rucker. Knocks his glasses off. Yeah, it, like, pulls him off with its pinky and its uh, thumb. And we're like, holy shit. And I don't even... What, what the fuck happened uh, how did Stan Stone get away? Do you know Chris? Chris? Can you help us? Uh, so how how it happened was uh, as soon as his glasses come off, he tries to spin around to face the monster and shoot it, but it trips him and he falls over. And it's just before the monster's about to get him when uh, Dick blows a hole through the uh, through the the the, the tube car. And, uh, and and nails him in the chest, uh, hits him a couple of times again, and then chucks a grenade through the hole. And the uh, the monster's distracted enough by this that uh, that Stone just is able to get away by by dive rolling through a glass window. Yeah, yeah. And then he just starts making out with Michelle. They're having the time of their life. He starts making out with Michelle, and, and like. Perfect microwave timing on Dick. He, yeah. he gets the grenade at the right moment. He's laughing his ass off. Fucking grenade blows up. But but Stone's like, that ain't it. That can't be it. That can't kill. Yeah, yeah. We need us some electric. 
So fortunately, there's some live wires just laying out there. They turned them off. They, they, they got a little control thing. That, and he, <laughs> back to New Year's Evil. Anybody got a screwdriver? Yeah. Because he put the screwdriver. We know that's how you operate you know, electrical equipment. You just put a screwdriver. If only I... Well, I had my screwdriver when my power went out for six fucking days. Well, you could have gone down to the DTE control center and just said, guys, this <laughs> fell out. You need a yellow handle screwdriver, not a red handle one. God. So he, he, he's like, all right, give me some slack. They're all working together. They're yeah, it's it. like a vacuum. It like got, the cord got knotted up on something, so they have to undo it. And Dick's being a total bitch about it. He's like, I don't think I can get in here. Michelle's taking, like, a ram from him and just bashing shit, clearing away. I mean, she's got she's got some of that stone DNA in her, if you catch my drift, and uh, <laughs> that's really paying off big right. here. So he, 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 like, hits the fucking monster with the electrical wire. He's like, Juice, hit it. They hit it. Turn it off. All right, we're done. I've, <laughs> I've killed it. We've got enough. And then uh, and I, wasn't, I wasn't feeling it. Yes, please. Give us the end. All right, the the now uh, battle damaged monster just sort of stumbles out, uh, tries to tackle Stone, who then gets the upper hand, and then does like the Temple of Doom Kalima chest punch on him, <laughs> and rips hey, out one the turn heart. another. Dude. Yeah, he he rips out the monster's heart with his bare hands and holds it still beating in his in his palm. Uh, while uh, while Durkin and Michelle just blast the crap out of the body, and um, before uh, before the end, um, uh, Stone is holding the uh, the heart in his hand, and you can hear like the the moans and screams of the souls trapped inside it. I think is what they were going for, yeah. and he just pulls out his hand cannon and just blows it up in his hand. So, yeah, so, demon, rat creature, venom, we don't fucking know still. And we just did the move. Man. But they, but then there's a little, like, set up for a sequel. We see a little bubbling in the water. Is there another one of these things? That's right. There was, like, maybe, like, venom, it really does just come back together. It's carnage. A yeah, it comes back. It's carnage. So, we get a final scene. They're on, they found a speedboat. And they're just cruising, partying on the fucking, they're like, hey, it. Yeah. Yeah. Durkin's they're, doing they're, a cheesy voiceover uh, as though he were like a like the detective of of uh, of a comic book or something. And uh, and and Stone just tells him to shut up, and that's when the credits roll. I mean, I I just want to point out this could have been our team for Baywatch Night: Rucker Hauer with Dick Durkin and Michelle. That could have been our Baywatch Nights. Could have been. Could have been. Yeah, and there wow. actually was supposed to be a sequel um, that <laughs> never got made. Originally, the plot for it was supposed to be um, a, a, it was supposed to take place in the London London Channel or uh, like an underground uh, ground, uh, train station or something. Uh, yeah. Terrorists take over the 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 train, and um, and the the uh, Durkin and Stone have to to go in and take care of the situation. And I, I guess at some point or another, more of the supernatural stuff happens. Um, but that never, never, never came into fruition. Um, and actually originally a uh, split second was a film that was supposed to, that was written in 1988. It was supposed to be set in LA and was titled Pentagram. And originally they were looking at having Harrison Ford play the character of Harley Stone. Um, before they ended up rewriting it years later and settled on Rutger Hauer instead, which I think was a much better fit. So yeah. just a little bit I, of background I, history for you. Well, it's probably a good thing we didn't get a sequel. Just There's a lot to love, but it's it's mostly Rutger. I couldn't imagine Harrison Ford would have would have pulled out the stop, you know, the yeah. coffee, the pen stirring. He wouldn't yeah. have done that. He's not alpha enough, is that what you're saying? Right. Well, Rucker is super alpha, right. which is why he's getting a whole fucking month. Right. Great job, Chris. You set the bar. I I would be scared if I was the future guest because we're not we're not backing down on our prom. If you get the lowest fucking first week downloads, 
acid bath. We got to do some. We got an acid bath in, after we saw Death Wish Five. We got an acid bath installed in the compound. Of we did. And all we've been doing now is throwing apple cores and banana peels in it. We want to throw a body in. You got to feed your acid bath. That's the main right. thing. That's why a lot of people lose their acid baths is they don't feed it properly. So yeah, you guys, you guess. Trunks. <laughs> there you go. Bring some rah rahs. You guys that are listening, I know you're listening. You better take notes for what Chris did because he did a great job. Next week, Griff. This this is a shout out to uh, this is the person that kind of put the the a germ in my our heads about Harker Hour Month because this is a year coming. It was our Thanksgiving episode where we let the fans choose. This was this came in second place. Oh. And I promised at SFF Audio that we would do this movie, and we're finally doing it, people. And not only that, we're calling in from across the pond. He's gonna he'll tell us what they call a croissant. In, in England, it's the sexy Scotsman Stuart Bannerman. I'm so jealous that he says he has the sexiest voice. It's fucking wedlock, aka deadlock. Rucker Howard month continues next week. Keep it warm.